You ready? Good morning. My name is Kevin Wagner, and I am the, special, the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate for today's hearing. I want to begin by explaining how the process is going to work. We typically hear building cases first on the agenda, and then the city will call the cases in the order in which they appear on the agenda. If you have appeared at today's hearing, which obviously since you're here you have, your case will be called before the cases where no one has appeared, only if you have actually signed in. So if you have not signed in, uh, do check with one of the code officers in the back and make sure you get on the agenda. Once your case is called, I ask that you come down to the podium on my right-hand side, which is over there. The city will put on its testimony and evidence first. You will have an opportunity to review this evidence and ask any questions of any of the city's witnesses. You will also have an opportunity to testify yourself and present me with any of your own evidence. Once all the testimony and evidence is heard, I will make a ruling. Uh, you will get a copy of this ruling uh, sent to your mailable address. So uh, make sure that you have the appropriate address on file. If you have any questions as we go through the process, please feel free to ask them. This is not a formal courtroom, however, and the formal rules of evidence do not apply here. However, all testimony today is given under oath under penalty of perjury. So if you are going to testify or that you think you might testify or there's a possibility that you might testify, please rise and raise your right hand and I will swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be truthful and accurate under the penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Florida? All right, please be seated. The city can call their first case. Matter number 31, CE 1907-0296-261 Palmetto Lane. Is there someone here on this case? William uh, Sanderson. Yeah, the neighbor, he's the neighbor. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good morning. Code Enforcement Officer Richard Pesmino for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was originally cited by former West Palm Beach Code Officer Richard Paget. This property was cited July 15th, 2019. Certified mail was sent July 16th, 2019, and the property was posted July 16th, 2019. I have had no contact with the owner of the property. Um, the property was cited for excessive growth, um, pool and spa, unsanitary, emergency abatement, overgrowth, and landscape maintenance. This is the, uh, the third case of this year for the unsanitary pool at the property. The property failed the reinspection on 7 19, 2019. Uh, as of today, the property is still. That's the wrong pictures. Is there currently a code enforcement order on this property? No, there's not. So what happened to the previous they, case? The previous cases, they complied in time. Um, they only cleaned the pool when they're cited. And the property is only cleaned up when they're cited. And when's the last time you saw this property? I saw it on the 3rd, I believe. They, they had cut all the bushes. Um, they cut, they like cleaned out the whole front yard. Uh, but the neighbor here has access to see the pool, and um, he's stating that the, the pool is still unsightly and green. Is that the only issue, the pool? As of right now, the pool in the backyard. Okay, well, so let me hear some testimony about the pool. <coughs> Sir, can you state your name and address for me, please? I'm Bill Sanderson, and I live at 271 Palmetto. So tell me what you saw. Uh, 271 is exactly west of this property, and uh, the the place, I just built the house there. And now that it's finished, we're trying to enjoy the place, but the pool sure. is the pool, and the whole house for that matter. There's no power on in the house, so there's consequently. I can't address any issues that are no, not cited well, before. That's me. why the pool pump doesn't work, and that's okay. why every time you people go and say the pool's terrible, the, the owner goes out, he buys a bunch of Clorox and stuff, throws it in, and it lasts about three weeks and then it gets disgusting again. Mm -hmm. And every time he kills things, I've been over there, there's, there's polywogs, there's frogs, there's mosquitoes, everything's breeding in there. I have two photographs, one of, that I took yesterday. Were you able to see this pool from your home, sir? Sure, okay. I'm next door. Okay. I stood up on a, a cement block and I took the picture. 
this picture, I'll submit it or whatever. It's, it's not clean. The pool is full of dark things that are palm fronds that are lying in the bottom. And the jacuzzi has all these little piles of uh, lizard poop all around it. And the jacuzzi is repulsive. I took a picture of my place just to so you can see what a pool should look like. They're all yours if you'd like them. Is the but city okay with this as a Fourth Amendment issue? Uh, good morning. The city would have some concerns about this. Certainly, um, it can be submitted to your review to take it as a photograph subject to, um, you know, privacy concerns. Well, I took it from my property, and you people are welcome to go over there and inspect it on your own. He's now locked the gate. The previous inspector that's not on the case anymore. Can you for see the pool without uh, without the aid of standing on a block to see over the yes, fence? Yes, I can. I yeah. just stood up so I get a better angle. But you could see this just standing in your backyard. Yes, yes. It's not seeing it. It's everything that's growing in it. It's unhealthy for me and unhealthy for the my. The reason neighbors. I'm asking you these questions, sir, is that the backyard of someone's home is part of their curtilage, and to look at it, you have to be in a legal position to do so, right? I'm so in you my yard. You can't right? sneak into their yard, or you can't use mechanical means to be able to see into their yards. Otherwise, it's not admissible evidence. Do you understand I, what I'm saying? My wall is six feet high. Right. I can see over my wall, and I built the wall all around the house. And that stops a lot of things. But this pool is unhealthy for the neighborhood, unhealthy for my neighbors, and unhealthy for me. OK. And these pictures, you can have them. But you can also duplicate it. Anyone that wants, you in particular, are welcome to come to my house without using any props. You can look over the wall and see what's going on there. And there's n it's never going to be right, because the gentleman does not have power on in the house. So, so there's no circulating pump. He cleans it, it kills everything, it falls to the bottom of the pool, and after the, the killing agent he puts in is, uh, is out of power, everything starts to fester and it grows polywogs, mosquitoes, and everything that's unhealthy. And even today, after he went there because you or your predecessor had called him out on it, the pool is still repulsive. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Um, I believe that there's photographs and evidence and the, um, as well the uh, testimony of our code enforcement officer that you can um, consider as well. Did you at some point see this pool? I, I did not see the pool myself. I just saw the photos and I saw the front yard and they did secure the fence, uh, the gate. Your predecessor's been over there. Yeah. So, so you can't testify unless you're actually up here. Otherwise, it's off the record. No, not for the pool. I know that it did fail the reinspection on the 719. He, so they my, did reinspect on the pool issue and it failed. Yes. Okay. What remedy is the city seeking? The city is seeking um, order to abate the property if it's not corrected in five days. Can you describe why you think this might be a health safety violation for the city? Uh, the condition of the pool is unsanitary and it's a habitat for vermin and pests, mosquitoes. All right, in case CE 19070296, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice is good and sufficient, I find the property in violation of 18106N. I order the respondent to come into compliance within five days for the city. Make, well, actually, make, let me make further finding that the condition of the property constitutes a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the City of West Palm Beach. I order the respondent to come into compliance with 18106N within five days so the City may enter the property and abate any and all violations of 18106N. I hereby assess the cost of the abatement against the property and property owner. Number 56, CE 19060020218 South Robbins Drive.
Go ahead. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On June 3rd, the property at 218 South Robbins Drive was cited for tree trimming standards and hat racking prohibited. Pro Notice was hand delivered on June 4th. Certified mail was sent June 4th. Certified mail was received June 6th. I have been in contact with the property owner. Um, uh, we went over remedies to comply the violations. The hat racking of the tree in the swale. City's recommending a one-time fine of $250 and the tree trimming standards on the tree on the property. City's recommending 90 days to replace the tree. Thank you. Is that the tree that was hat racked? Yeah, there's two trees that are hat racked. There's one on the property and one in the swale. The one on the property is um, severely hat racked. It's gonna need to be replaced. Um, I, I did so. provide the property owner with a list of proper trees that can um, that can replace that tree. So she does have um, the literature and information to um, get the tree replaced. Where's the one on the swale? That one there, the one in the swale. It can't be replaced. So city's asking for a one-time fine of two hundred and fifty dollars. Why can't it be replaced? Because um, of the location. Ordinance states that um, the, nothing can be planted in the, in the swale, so she takes it out, she's not gonna be able to put anything back in. Um, I, I've also ran this past our, um, our arbitress and he's stating the same thing, that the one in the swale cannot be replaced. Can that tree survive? Can either of these trees survive? Yeah, but they won't allow the well, city won't allow them to replace it. All right, ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? My name is Paula Bray. And you are the owner of this property, ma'am? Uh, yes, I am. So what happened to your trees, ma'am? I had the tree, the, I don't understand the tree on my property. I didn't know that I couldn't cut that tree. It's on my property. That tree I planted there. And I told Mr. McFarland, both of the trees are, you know, messing up my sprinkler system. I had the one, that one is coming back on the property. Um, and the one on the swale, I had called the city numerous times to have them come and trim the tree. As a matter of fact, they used to trim the tree all the time. But the limbs were over in my neighbor's yard. It was just too much. They will come and trim just the portion where the... Um, sign is for the speed limit and that's it so the the branches were in my neighbor's yard all over it the you know their uh, driveway and i did have it trimmed so in case of a hurricane all that stuff does not fall now the other one i didn't even know the one on my property i figured i could cut it down if i wanted because i planted that tree there the one that he said severely hacked yeah, it turns out that the city doesn't let you do that. They have an ordinance that, uh, that prevents you from treating trees like that, even if you planted it yourself. It's, uh, it's an ordinance 944462B1, which prevents the hat racking of trees, which is sort of, if you could look at the picture, you can see it's like a hat rack, right? So, um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of the law that we, uh, we live with when we live in a city, that there are certain pruning standards for trees. So the, the remedy the city was seeking here was 250 for the hat rack tree? Yes, sir. That's on her property. And then no, nine, that's not. No, the, the one not, in the swale. That's the one, one on the swale. The swale. The one on her property is going to need to be replaced. <laughs> on what basis would I, I mean, that she doesn't have to have a tree there, does she? Because she, she could just get a permit to remove it? No. City, uh, city ordinance um, states that... If you remove a tree, you have to replace it. 
on your private property? Yes, ma'am. I think so. Hmm. Anything else you want to tell me, ma'am? Uh, no, I mean, the other tree on the swell, you know, it's coming back. I didn't, you know, know that you couldn't cut the tree in a certain way, which I did not. Like I told Mr. McFarland, I didn't know that. And on my property, I figured it was my property. If I want to cut it down, I could cut it down since I planted it there. I didn't know that there was an ordinance that says on your own property, you cannot take the tree down. There's all kinds of ordinances about what you can and can't do on your own property, ma'am. I didn't know that since I had planted it and I wanted it down because, like I said, it's interfering with the sprinklers and that's why I was getting it cut down. In fact, I have 92 cases today about things that people can or can't do on their property. <laughs> All right, in case uh, CE1906002, I'm going to make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, I find the property is, in fact, in violation of 944462B1 and 944462B3. As to the property, as to the tree that was trimmed on the respondent's property, I issue a one-time fine of $150. As to the, uh, no, I'm sorry, as, that's to the tree in the swale. As to the tree on the property, I give the respondent 90 days to replace. I'm sorry? Well, we'll say a fine up to 150, uh, up to $25 per day. Okay. Number 77, CE 1907-0407-510-44th Street. Where we go? Go ahead, sir. Good morning. Chris Thompson, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Um, this property at um, 510 44th Street was, prop was posted um, on 723 2019 um, It was po cited for outdoor storage, unpaved parking, trash can placement. Um, certified mail was sent on the 24th. So it was posted in, at City Hall on the 23rd. I have made contact with the homeowner. Um, as of yesterday, the property was still not in compliance. Um, the city is requesting an additional 10 days to come into compliance and or $100 per day until appliance is achieved. Can you describe for me what the violations on the property are? Okay, like I said, there are outdoor storage. There are items outdoor around the property. Um, there's, there was a car parked on the front grass in front of the front door which is on paved parking, and um, the trash can was pretty much always visible from the public. It's right in the front of the property. Sir, can you tell me your name and address, please? Michael Panzak. I live at 148 Thornton Drive in Palm Beach Gardens. And you're the owner of this property, sir? Yes, sir. Is this a rental? It is. So tell me what's going on. Um, I just I have somebody that I... Uh, decided to put some stuff in the uh, carport that wasn't supposed to be there and um, garbage can that they can't seem to wheel around to the back of the house but uh, we've had a discussion about it this weekend and uh, it'll be back there now so it's just a handful of little items that need to be picked up and um, Mr. Thompson who's been very cooperative um, has asked that we kind of shield the washer and dryer that are in the carport just from the street I mean there's a washer and dryer that I've been there prior to me even owning the property so um, that's what's going on so. is the washer and dryer an issue well, it's, as if, you, if you can see in the picture, it's visible from the street right here next to the van. How much time do you think you need to bring this property into plan, sir? Uh, a week, 10 days, and I'll have it all squared away for you. <coughs> in an abundance of caution, I'll give you 15 days. Thank you. In case CE 1907 I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 9442A, 9471C, and 7434A1J. I give the respondent 15 days to bring the property into compliance or a fine of up to $100 per day made. Thank you. Number 59, CE. 
Number 59, CE1906026350, Superior Place. Go ahead, Officer McFarland. Good morning. City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On June 13, the property at 507 Superior Place was cited for tree trimming standards. Exterior paint. Address characters and hat racking. The property was posted July 23rd. Certified mail was sent June 14th. Certified mail was received June 20th. I have been in contact with the property owner. The property has since come to con compliance with the exterior paint and the address characters. As for the tree trimming and hat racking, city's requesting a one-time fine of $250. Again, this is a tree in the swale, so it cannot be replaced. So it's irreparable in nature? Correct. What do you mean irreparable? Is that the tree? Yeah, that's the tree. Sir, can you tell me your name, please? Yes, sir. My name is Calvin DeLoach. So what happened to your tree? Well... We had um, the last hurricane that came in 2017. I had been called in the city, you know, just like my last neighbor that was here, off for years to get the tree trimmed, and nobody ever, you know, replied to it or came out to do anything about it. And did you call? You called your neighbor? Excuse me. You called your neighbor, or who'd you call? Oh no, no, no. I think it, I can't remember his name. Was it? Is there a Gary Gray? I would have no I idea. You anyway, called the city. Yes, numerous times. We've only been there since 07. And I've been calling for years to get the tree trimmed. Nobody ever came out, looked at it, or trimmed it. Does or the whatever. city care for these trees that are in these swales? Is it the city, does they the city do, take responsibility? They do. Is, the thing is, <laughs> they do it once a year. And if it's not causing a hazard, mm -hmm. they won't trim it. So the city isn't... The city is bringing this case not because they, they trimmed the tree, but because they trimmed it improperly. Correct. Okay. And I have pictures, um, your magistrate, of when I cut it, and it's already growing back. Um, you know, it, 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 it was, it's just a, a nasty tree. It, 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 the uh, 2017 hurricane, I have a picture where the city had to come out, and it was blocking the entire street. It, uh, uh, this is a huge tree. The branch broke, and it was totally across the street. I call that in. Yeah, but I don't think that the, if I understand the city's position correctly, I, I, I don't think they're arguing that you didn't have, they, that it was wrong okay. for you to trim this tree. I think what they're arguing is that it was trimmed in an improper right, way. Right, and I hired somebody to do it. I had no idea. But if I, I'd like to show you the day that the tree was trimmed and how much it's come back since, if you don't mind. Yeah. You have to talk on the mic, otherwise it won't record. Let me see the other phone. And here yeah. it is to date. Yes, you look at okay, that? I had the tree. We had the tree trimmed May 28th, and that's two months and nine days, and that's how much it's back. So it's definitely not dead. Yeah, I don't think it's a question of dead, but if you can see in the trimming photo, it looks like they just lopped right. off the tops of the I branches. Know, which I, um, I understand now that that's what you call hat racking, but... I, you know, I didn't See, know. I, I, what I don't get to do here is I, I, I don't get to decide whether or not the city's ordinances are right or wrong. That's what the city council does. I, I, the, the limit of my authority is what's the ordinance and do the facts meet the ordinance? And this is hat racking. I mean, it's, yeah, well, I, it's hat racking. Now, I'm not an arborist. I can't tell you whether this will, you know, cause the tree to be weak or damaged or, you know, what the future of this tree is. But it's, it's pretty back. clear to me that it's hat racking. What remedy is the city? Is the city seeking a one-time fine of two fifty. Oh, correct. All right. Um, is this fifty-nine. Yes. 
In CE 19060263, I'll make the following findings of fact and law. If I find notice is sufficient, I find the property in violation of 944462B1 and 944462B3. I make further finding that said violation is irreparable in nature. I'll issue a one time fine, the amount of $150. $150. You should make sure when you bring the guy out the trim, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Matter number 46, CE 19050313-1401 Village Boulevard, Unit 928. There's also two other ones that go with that. You want me to call them? It's, it's, yeah, it's the same address. It's 40. All right, call them all. Also, matter number 47, CE 19050314-1401 Village Boulevard, Unit 1418. And matter number... 48, CE 19050315, Village Boulevard, Unit 2012. Okay. Good morning, Officer Levine, City of West Palm Beach Code. All three properties were cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Service was accomplished by certified mail, which was signed for on 5-22-2019. The respondent did apply for a rental license and it's pending, um, they're all pending inspection. However, um, usually when a respondent applies for a rental license, an email is sent to that respondent with information to contact the officer um, for an inspection and to make the necessary payments of the fees. The first email was sent to the wrong address because their last name was spelt wrong. Who um, sent to the wrong address, the respondent or you? No, it was sent to the, it was sent to the respondent, but it was sent to the wrong address. And um, how did the city get the wrong address? Beg your pardon? Was that a typo, was that a typo it, error? It was a typo, yes, okay. it was a typo. Now this is a courtesy that the city does. It's not something that is required by the city. We just try to get it done so the, the respondent knows exactly what's going on. Um, last week, Tuesday, I reached out, sent an email to the respondent. Yes, it went to the wrong address again. I researched it and resent it. I also spoke to the, um, left a voicemail for the respondent. And um, letting the respondent know, well, look, I'm going to be working Saturday. We could set up the appointment. We have enough time to do the appointment to get it off the agenda. I got a phone call from, well, the respondent didn't respond to the email. I got a phone call on Friday, and the respondent said to me, and I quote, um, he needs to verify this violation to, to make sure that it's legit. Exact words. Objection hearsay? All out. Right? When I explained to him that you signed for the document on 522, and at the bottom of the document, it says my name and my phone number. I called you and I said my name, Kevin Levine, and I'm calling from the city of West Palm Beach, and I'm calling to set up an appointment to have these inspections done. And this is what I got. So the city's So let me understand the city's position on this case. There are three rental properties, rental units on this property. No, three different units. Three different units on this property all of which require a rental license according to the city. There are tenants there? Yes, sir. Verified by the um, property management. And the city has record that the respondent applied for licenses for each of these three properties? Absolutely, yes, sir. And so what is holding this up is the inspections? Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Rosenberg here for Barrier Realty LLC. Um, we ask that we continue this and get it on the next um, docket for purposes that all we need is the inspection. And as uh, the last communication, or one of the last communications between my client and Mr. Levine was that um, an inspection could be done August 12th, um, but that was after the date of this hearing. So the hearing had to go on. So um, we asked the court to continue this to the next date and hopefully it will fall off the docket at that point. Um, if you'd like me to defend the action, I absolutely will. Um, I, you know, we feel that due to the Scrivener's error made on the emails, that um, even though it was a courtesy and we appreciate it, um, that it has prejudiced my, you know, the client from being able to properly comply and have the inspection. 
um, you know. Well, it's, a, it's your client's obligation to get the license. It's not the city's obligation to remind your client to get the license. Your client has a tenant in the city of West Palm Beach. They're supposed to get a license. Correct, and, and they have the license at this point, but they just don't have the inspection. Well, until they get the inspection, they don't have the license. Yes. How much time does your client need to get this inspection done? Um, at whenever Mr. Levine is available, I believe, he, I, August 12th, but... If you know, if you'd like to give 30 days, that would be generous. Is the city all right with 30 days? So generally, it's 30 days to come into compliance, or $200 a day thereafter. So I'm fine with we, we, the city is fine with it. Yes, and we could get. There's no need for a continuance. We could get the inspection done sometime next week if Mr. Yan is willing to comply. I'll give you the 30 days in all three cases. So this is going to be the same order for all three cases. I find the respondent in violation of 18162A and 2232A. I'll give the respondent 30 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of up to $200 per day may issue. It's the same order in all three cases. So that gives you plenty of time to get this done. Without fine, or the fines initiate after the 30 days? Yeah, if you get it done and within 30 days, the, office let the, the officer will do the inspection. He'll, he'll file an affidavit of compliance and the case will be dismissed. Thank you. Just for the record, sir, um, with the second email that I sent, a checklist was also sent to Mr. Yan indicating what we are looking for. So I'm hoping that the respondent would look well, into why, that. Why don't and we ensure. do this? Because I'm not, I'm not going to get into the details of that kind of thing. Why don't you talk to, uh, I'm sorry, sir, what your name was? Rosenberg. Uh, Mr. Rosenberg, and let him know what the procedure is and, and, and what the inspection is going to look like while we have time. And Excuse here. me. Okay. Excuse me. Wait. Um, Special Magistrate, I just want to clarify. Did you indicate that it's a fine of $200 a day or up to $200? Up to $200 per day. That bothers you? Yes, it does. Because across the board, it's $200 a day, not All up right. to $200 a day. I'll correct the record that the fine will be $200 per day. Thank you. Matter number 32, CE 1906 Street. Street. Good morning, Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case in reference to a, a multi-apartment building that was issued a notice of violation on June 7th for landscaping, need of maintenance, repair, and restoration, exterior lighting and disrepair, rodent and infe in insect infestation, trash and debris on the property, the uh, stairways and walkways were in disrepair, there's flaking and peeling paint, cracks and mildew on the ex exterior of the building, the notice of violation was issued via certified mail and posting on June 7th and gave the respondent 30 days to come to compliance. After notice of violation was issued, I was contacted on a few occasions by Mr. Morris, who's present today, who indicated he would take care of the violations. I met with uh, Mr. Morris on the property yesterday morning. He provided documentation that the insect and the rodent infestation has been addressed. And uh, yesterday's morning inspection revealed the property is now in compliance with the following code sections. 18100, the trip hazard safe egress on the property have been addressed. 18103C, interior walls and floors have been repaired. 18103F, the, stairway, the stairways have been repaired. 18103I, the damaged exterior lighting and electrical have been repaired. The property, however, remains in violation of the following code sections. 18103A and 18103J, the exterior walls and roof soffits are in need of repair, cleaning and painting. There was somebody out there yesterday starting that work. 74-4C-4, uh, there's still a palm tree on the property that's in need of maintenance. 94-442E, the swell is in need of sod. 94-446-2, the exterior landscape is in need of uh, restoration. At yesterday's meeting, Mr. Morris stated he restored the landscaping and complete the uh, repairs as we discussed. The city is asking for compliance within 30 days or up to a $100 day fine be assessed. What's the uh, 18103A violation alleged? 18103A has to do with the, uh, with the exterior of the walls, exteriors of the building itself. What's um, wrong with it? There's mildew, there's cracks, there's peeling paint um, along the soffits. The soffits have holes in them um, underneath. You can see in that picture right there, for example, there's mildew. Uh, there's other issues as well. 
All right, so wall repair, paint, tree trimming, and then landscaping and sod. Did I follow you correctly? Yes, sir. All right, sir, can you tell me your name, please? Robert Morris. And what is your relation to the owner? I'm the owner. Well, Rob King Enterprises, Inc. is the owner. Yep. Is that yes. your company? It is. Okay. 50 years. All right, so the city says you, uh, you have a few things left to do. Do you, uh, do you agree or disagree? I agree, but I want to tell you what I've done also, even though he mentioned. Um, I do have something I'll submit into evidence. Okay. Yeah, just just show up. up to the officer first. He saw it yesterday, actually. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Well, if you're going to submit the evidence, I've got to keep it. For the record, I'm going to accept this. Will, do you have any objection? No, sir. All right, I'll accept this in evidence as Respondents Exhibit 1. It is so marked as such. Go ahead, sir. Okay, so um, one was cut trees, and that was a misunderstanding because I had uh, a cabbage palm, which was between both buildings, which was overgrown, professionally trimmed, I was, which I considered a type of palm tree. So I did have that done thinking I had complied. I also removed an avocado tree from the property that was in poor health. So those were the two I had trimmed. The coconut palm he's referring to, in the past, the city used to trim it, and the city has not trimmed it. So I will take care of that, but I misunderstood uh, which trees, I guess. The others also needed it, so I had them professionally trimmed and removed. Okay. Um, as far as the um, swale goes, well, first of all, let me go to the painting. Um, the painting only was not done because, first of all, the construction is not CBS. It's wood, a lot of wood. We've had rain continuously, and the mold has been removed. You noticed that yesterday, a lot of it. But, um, and that's where the two trees were growing, which totally shaded that area. That's why the mold did appear. Um, the building would have been painted long ago. I do what I'm supposed to do when I'm asked. However, uh, with all the rain, the wood has been wet, and wood has to be 100% dry before you paint it. This building was totally painted uh, not even five years ago. I agree it needs it again, not disagreeing, but that is the reason it didn't get done. Um, as I mentioned to the inspector, I've talked to him twice on the phone, twice in person. Um, this would have been uh, the landscaping he wants done, we did put two pallets of sod down. Um, but in all honesty, um, and we discussed it yesterday, the swale is, uh, the area between the sidewalk and the uh, street, is uh, full growth, green, um, no bare spots. But I did not realize, and I will do it, it's not an issue, I have weeds there. so. I assume since the ground was covered, we put two pallets of sod down where there were bare spots. Um, and I did not remove the um, weeds or the area between the swale to saw that, but I'll be glad to do that. Um, so that's pretty much it. I agree with everything he's, uh, the inspector said about what we uh, did do. Uh, electrical was two outdoor lights with globes missing. Uh, they were replaced with new lights. Um, so I agree with everything, except, uh, and I still agree, it's just uh, maybe a misunderstanding on the... Uh, Mr. Morris, I appreciate the fact that uh, you've made significant efforts to improve this property, so I'm willing to give you the time that you need to bring the, the rest of it into compliance. The city is suggesting 30 days. Is that sufficient time for you, sir? As long as the weather stays good, believe me, I'd rather get it done and over with. Right. But it's rained almost every day. Yeah, I live here, And too. it's a two-story building, and it has to be... I want to do it right. I don't want to do a half a job. So. Is there any reason you think this couldn't be done in 30 days? Uh, I don't. I uh, don't know what the weather's going to be like, but I have no problem if, uh, if you want to give me a little... if uh, extra time is permitted. If... I mean, I want to get it done. It's not... You know what I'll do, just in... 
if you make your commitment to me that you're going to get this done as soon as you can, I'll, I'll create a, a 45 days so that, okay. heaven forbid, that the weather just does not let up. It gives you a little more leeway. Right. But as long as you're committing to me, you're going to get to this as soon as you can. All right. In case CE 19060054, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 18103, 18103J, 7404C4, 9442E, and 944462. Give the respondent 45 days to bring the property into compliance or a fine of $100 per day may issue. Thank you for coming. Thank you in, very sir. much. Matter number 18, CE 19050270 Washington Road. 18? Traveling back in time. Before we begin, may I ask a question? Hold on one sec. Sure. All right, go ahead. Who has the burden of proof and the burden of persuasion in these matters? It's just a, a, a question of uh, whether or not there's sufficient evidence to establish that there's a violation of the code. Well, the city's making an accusation and when they make the accusation, they have to prove the accusation. And we're having, we may have a problem. I mean, well, let's see how it goes. Go. Thank you. Go ahead, Officer Lopez. Sure. Good morning, Special Magistrate. Alex Lopez with the City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Property located at 7001 Washington Road is a residential property that was brought to my attention by a neighboring property regarding a safety concern in the form of a non permitted installation and use of an electrical vehicle charging station within the city right-of-way. Upon my inspection, I observed an electrical box at the base of a tree within the city right-of-way adjacent to this property, 7001 Washington Road. Continued from the outlet was a charging cable with a connector mounted onto the side of the tree facing the street as shown within the photographs. During my inspection, I was approached by the property owner's father who resides nearby and he explained to me that his son uh, Mr. Alton charges his vehicle at the said location. I later spoke with the property owner, Mr. Alton, over the phone and explained the violation and its corrective measures. I also informed him that upon research, there is no record of a permit from his property for the installation of the unit. Mr. Alton then explained that the electrical outlet was not installed by him and that it belongs to the city. He then stated that he purchased and installed his charging cable uh, into the city's electrical box to use to which I responded that is also not permitted. Your Honor, this property was cited for not obtaining a permit for the installation and use of the electrical outlet and its accessories. For debris in the form of dirt and rocks covering portions of the sidewalk, a landscape overgrowth within the right-of-way, prohibited <clears throat> excuse me, attachments onto a tree, an expired permit and passing inspections for all permits. What permits expired? There was a there was an old um, permit for There's a 2013 permit residential miscellaneous number 13060814. It was for a concrete slab adjacent to the property. Um, back in September 9th of 2013, the contractor submitted a letter to cancel, and then as of 8-5 of 2019, I went to the city and had them properly um, revoke it, and I have the copy of the record, and Mr. Lopez has Was been notified. Was the pad ever installed? No, never. Seems moot. Yeah, so I did verify that that permit has been revoked. Um, now the... Um, The property was cited on June 12th, 2019. The notice was mailed first class and certified mail. The property was also posted on June 25th, 2019, and there has been contact with the property owner. Uh, Special Magistrate to date, as stated, the following code sections have complied. 18106A, 744C4, and the expired permit FBC 105.4.1.3. All other code sections remain in violation. So the city is pursuing this case for a permit for the for the installation and use of the um, electrical box and its 
uh, associated components. The tree. And the tree protection, which is the attachments onto the tree, the cable and the stake, um, and any of their accessories attached to the tree. And that's it? And for the required inspections. That would be for uh, the permit, fall under the permit for the continued uh, use and the installation of that, of the uh, vehicle charging station on the tree. That section cites this permit that's expired, right? No. Uh, that is correct, it does. 13060814. All right, so let's talk about 105.1 and 744C4. Go ahead, sir. So what's going on with your charging port here? Um, if we could take care of the vegetation 744C4 first. Uh, Mr. Lopez was scheduled to come and inspect the property yesterday. He's not pursuing that, is, right? That's oh, listed as correct. That's complied. complied. So yes. the only, I'm sorry, for, for the record, can we clarify which ones the city is still alleging are improper? 105.1 and 944485F3. Special Magistrate, can I make sure, did he place his name on the record uh, and his name relationship? My name is Yugi Alton, it's spelled U-I-G-A-R, Alton, A-L-T-A-N. Judy Yugi. Alton? Yugi, U-G-I. Yugi. And who is Beret Alton? My mother. And born. are you here speaking on behalf of your mother? Yes, I am. I was born and raised in that house at 7001 Washington Road. I've lived there effectively for 31 years. Does she know that you're here speaking on her behalf? Yes, yeah, she's out of the country. The city have any standing objection here? No objection. All right, so tell me about your charge report. Um, I'd like to correct the record. I never told Mr. Lopez it was the city's outlet. Um, you know, I've lived at this house for 31 years and Typical to other homes in my neighborhood, we have landscaping lighting at the swale. And that used to be, and I have a, I found Google images from street views from November 2007 that depict the outlet as being there. It was an outlet and a light combination. And over the years, as time goes by, I um, bought an electric vehicle and I plugged in a very simple device. It plugs into the outlet and it plugs into my car. So the city's trying to say that my use of that, there's like two arguments going on. One, they're saying that my use of the outlet's not allowed. What I do, what, what I plug into my outlet is, you know, respectfully my business, not the city's. And the second one is their accusation of saying that this installation was done improperly. That outlet's been there and I have photographs to show it. So, I mean, the house has been there since the 50s. My parents bought it sometime in 1983. So when was the outlet installed? It's been there as far as I can remember. I have a picture when I was a little child planting the hedges around the house, and when I remember that, that outlet was there because there was always landscaping lighting. But there's no evidence this was ever permitted? That's correct. There is done research within the building department. Um, there is no record on file of this outlet being there in place, being permitted. So at some point in the distant past, somebody installed an outlet here without a permit? Possibly. See, that's why I'm asking about the burden of persuasion and the burden of proof, because the city's not coming with the allegation of saying that the outlet is, in fact, improper. They're simply coming and saying they can't find a record of it. And when I spoke with Mr. Lopez and I asked him how far back he went to look at his record to review the permit history, the plans, the original installation from 1954, when the house was originally installed, he can't give me any dates and he can't show me anything. And the best that I can do is go back to my resources, look at Google Maps, look at the street view, and I can show that 12 12 years ago, that outlet was there. What would be the reason that there wouldn't be a permit on file? That the uh, property owner did not apply and obtain a permit to have that outlet and the, uh, the components in place. Is it possible it was installed during the construction of the home? Yes. And would it need a separate permit at that time? No. That would, that would One, be on I'm, record. I, I can't ask two people the same question, so I'll come back to you. Go ahead. That would be on record, and based on the conversation that I had with the building department, they do not have anything on record showing that that outlet was there. So it wasn't there when it was constructed, but at some point it 
was put on there, and there's no evidence that there's a permit on the file. Is that an accurate statement about what? That is correct. Okay, go ahead, sir. There is no record to rebut that the outlet wasn't there, so we don't know. I wasn't born when the house was built, and all I can come here is with my testimony and my proof, my evidence, showing that the outlet's been there for at least 12 years. That's all I can show. And the city isn't meeting any burden by simply accusing and saying this isn't there. They have no records. The records of the original electrical installation of the house do not exist in the city's Is that records. true? Are there I no records? Is that true? Are there no records at the construction of this house? Well, I'm not sure. I couldn't answer that. Obviously, there has to be a record of a home well, me, being built me, within the city. But as far as yeah. me having to look over the plans and, and providing you that, those plans, I do not have that here for you. Go ahead. Did you want to say something? I mean, I was just going to address that, you know, the plans for the house itself might be outside the scope. But the way I'm seeing it is if there was no permit, there, you're not going to find records of something that doesn't exist. Well, well that and is true, but I, I guess the, the question that the respondent is trying to raise is that it was installed lawfully at some point. And so what I'm trying to establish is, was it installed lawfully at some point? In other words, are there, are there records that, that would say that this was installed? At, I, mean, I guess the, the only lawful time that we haven't rolled out at this point was at the time the house was constructed. And is there any way to discover whether that was true or not? You know, um, what we can do, I can talk with more building officials and we would need, you know, time. I guess it would have to be continued or rescheduled. What's the, the other code section at issue here is this tree protection. Officer Lopez, tell me, tell me what the, the alleged violation is here. Um, upon my inspection, there was uh, the charging cable, the connector, and a stake to hold the, uh, the wiring in place mounted onto the tree, which is a, um, against the city code of, of tree protection. Okay. Those items cannot be, there can be no devices nailed, screwed, taped, or wrapped around a, a tree. Mr. Alton? It has been corrected. I have a photo showing the screw being removed. And because of Mr. Lopez's own unavailability for his scheduled inspection yesterday, he was unable to come and witness it for himself. I emailed him proof of all the photos and compliance as of this morning. Mr. Lopez and I were supposed to meet at the property sometime between 7 and 7.30. I was up and waiting for him outside from 6.45 all the way to 8 a.m. this morning. He did not show up. He called me sometime after 8, 8 a.m. apologizing for his unavailability, and I replied to him that I wrote him an email and submitted photos proof this morning. So all the violations have been corrected, and there should be no outstanding violation. Officer Lopez, did he email you photos? Yes, I did receive um, an email from Mr. Alton. I did receive some photographs um, in regards to the statement of the, um, the wires and accessories attached to the tree. The only picture that I received was a, a picture of a, a hand drill onto a screw. Um, okay. But as far as having another photograph showing the overall tree and everything being removed, that was not provided. So I will still need to do an inspection on that. I have a photo of that here. Officer Lopez. Excuse me, is there a, da a date and time stamp? All right, this is what I'm going to do in this case. Uh, in CE 19050270, as to section 105.1, I'm going to stay that and reset it for uh, code compliance within 30 days. Oh, Your Honor? Hold on a sec. Um, as to uh, 944853, I'm going to find there was a violation here, and I'm going to give the respondent 10 days to bring that into compliance if you've already done so. Excellent. Just make sure the code inspector comes to inspect it. Okay. I'd, All right. I'd simply like to request that the officer coordinate the inspection so I could be there and 
if there's anything outstanding, we can take care of it. Mr. Lopez, can you fine. speak to him right after we're done, which is in about five seconds? Sure. All right, thanks. Matter number 34, CE 19060312, 3613 Broadway. Welcome back, Officer Patrick. Thank you, sir. Uh, this case in reference to a former motel, which turned into uh, apartments a few years back. This property was issued a notice of violation, which gave uh, 30 days to comply on June 19th via certified mail and posting for a roof overhang that fell down in, in front of one of the occupied apartments in violation of code section 18103B. This property has been cited for numerous violations in the past, including uh, renting a property without a rental license. So that, that, that apartment building is being occupied right now without um, current rental license. <coughs> a fine is accruing and a lien um, has been recorded for the same. The property is also pending foreclosure by the city for uh, several violations that go back several years. After the notice of violation was issued, I was contacted by Eva Ruth Medina, who works for the uh, law firm that re represents the property owner, and, and a gentleman named Carlos, who's the contractor, hired to make the repairs to the property. I met with um, Ava and Carlos at the property in late June to discuss the roof, and they wanted to discuss some other outstanding code violations on the property as well. Uh, Carlos stated he was going to go in out of town on July 4th, um, but he would come back and he would apply for appropriate permits, including ones if they're needed for the permanent repair of the roof when he returned. Um, and he mentioned that he may want to include that in some type of master permit. Uh, yesterday I was contacted by Ava via email and uh, she asked if the property was going to hearing. Uh, it's the first time I've, I've heard from anybody, uh, including Carlos, uh, since late June. Uh, no progress has been made to permanently repair the roof exterior wall since the temporary repairs have been made. Uh, no, no permits have been applied for and no paint has been put on a building where the damage exists. Uh, the city is asking for the property to come into compliance within 30 days or a $250 day of fine be assessed. Sir, can you tell me your name, please? Uh, Guy Quattlebaum. I'm sorry, your last name? Quattlebaum. Can you spell that for me? Q-U-A-T-T-L-E-B-A-U-M. And I'm a, an attorney for the owner. You're an attorney, sir? Yes. So tell me what's going on. Uh, essentially, uh, I don't disagree with what was said. Uh, with regard to, I guess, what the violation is for today's hearing is the, is the roof part that fell in that has been remediated, that has been taken away. I think he, he, he stated that. Um, we're looking for additional time because uh, I know that he was thinking there would be a, an issue for a permit that would be needed for that roof. Apparently, our, our contractor has spoken with his roofing people who think that it's going to be a, a fairly easy fix for at least the, the roof portion, portion of this to the extent where it won't be enough cost to actually warrant to have to pull a permit. Spoken with the, uh, Mr. Petrick to talk about um, at least getting an, an, a, a information to him about that and that, that it won't need a permit through his roofing guy and that we'll go ahead and proceed with that. We're, and I, I appreciate him giving 30 days and we'd ask for 90 days simply because it's it, getting workers out into this particular property uh, in this type of a uh, construction boom, so to speak. It's been a little bit difficult for the contractor, um, but any time you give us would be appreciated. What's your position on the 90 days? The position on the 90 days is the respondent over the years, especially recently, has not been very uh, responsive for making, making repairs. Uh, there's current liens on a property that's being occupied in that particular condition, which it shouldn't be. Uh, it doesn't have a rental license. I, I think 90 days uh, is a little excessive. Uh, for a per roof permit and some paint. Yeah, it appears your client doesn't have a great history of compliance here, sir. I, I can't get what I don't ask for. So any, any time, I appreciate the 30 days. Like I said, I, we would appreciate more than 30 days. Uh, just to basically, there's, some, there's a lot of things to do on this property, and I don't know if 30 days would be able to, or at least we can at least make headway within the 30 days, but I would appreciate a little bit more time. All right, and CE 19060312, I make the following findings of fact on the life I notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of 18103B. I'll give the respondent 45 days to bring the property into compliance or a fine of up to $250 per day. May issue. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Matter number 49, CE 19050317, 1401 Village Boulevard, Unit 624. Uh, 
Are there two other properties with this one? 51 and 52. Same owner. Did they sign in on both of these? Mm -hmm. All right, let's call. Let's call number all three. 49, it's the same 51, thing. and 52. Matter number 51, CE 19050352, Village Boulevard, Unit 1713. And matter number 52, CE 19050354, Village Boulevard, Unit 1825. Ma'am, were you sworn in? Uh, I believe not. No. There's probably a lot of right. Anyone, uh, so let's take a moment to do this. Anyone who was not originally sworn in when we started this hearing, a little uh, over an hour ago, please rise and raise your right hand if you're going to testify to anything. You've got to stand up. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be truthful and accurate under the penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Florida? I do. Right. Go ahead, Officer Levine. Officer Levine, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Each of these properties was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Service was accomplished by certified mail. However, there was no signature attached to the certified mail. This um, property was posted on 7-24-2019. This owner lives, I think, is um, in South America and has applied for and is waiting for an FEIN number from the IRS. The city is requesting, um, for, because of this, these circumstances, the city is requesting 60 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. It usually takes about four to six weeks before an FEIN number is issued. Ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Giovanna Sanchez. I'm Bob, on behalf of Highlight Realty. You have to speak right into the mic because I don't hear as Sorry. well as I used to. Giovanna Sanchez on behalf of Highlight Realty. And you're a realtor? Yes. And you're here representing uh, Fabio Roth? I'm actually representing John Sanchez, the broker of Highlight Realty. He's the property manager for Fabio. So you're representing a broker who represents Fabio? Yes, he's also out of the country at the moment. So do you have any objection? Absolutely not. She reached out for me as soon as they, they got their uh, violation. All right, so the city is saying that you don't have rental licenses on this property and they're willing to give you 60 days to bring that property into compliance. Is that satisfactory? Yes, sir. And is that accurate? Yes. All right, so in cases 49, 51, and 52, we'll issue the same order, which is I find a violation of 18162A and 2232A and respondent has 60 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $200 per day may issue. All right, so you got your 60 days. You're going to get it done? Yes. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Matter number 55, CE 19050607-1500 Presidential Way, Unit 403. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarlane. The property on May 31st, the property at 1500 Presidential Way, Unit 403, was cited for clean and sanitary mold, mold, mold found in unit, uh, rental license violation, and certificate of use. Property was posted June 3rd. Certified mail was sent June 3rd. Certified mail was received June 18th. Um, I have been in contact with the property, property manager. Um, as of yesterday, we tried to complete an inspection of the, the mold and the rental. Unfortunately, um, there's still more work to be done. Um, at what, the what is left to be done? The, um, the, mold, the, the mold immediation has not been completed. So um, wall, walls still need to be painted. Um, cabinets still need, need to be reinstalled. Um, it's not in a condition to pass a rental inspection. Um, there's no lights. There's no water. 
So you inspected yesterday? Yes, yesterday. And it was not, and it did not pass inspection? No, it's not in a condition to pass it. inspection. Um, um, uh, what remedy is the city seeking? Uh, property manager did a request uh, 45 days to get everything into compliance. Um, city's in agreement with that. Uh, 45 days to come into compliance or $200 a day until compliance is achieved. Ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? My name is Janet Perez. And one more time. Janet. Janet. Perez. Perez. Hi, right, Ms. Perez. The city says that you have a mold problem. Well, I'm the representative of uh, the property management, and uh, my understanding is that uh, the mold problem... So let me uh, just make sure I understand your connection to this case, Ms. Perez. So you are representing the par property manager who represents Jonathan Lavelle? That's correct. Okay. The city says that they want to give you 45 days to bring this property in compliance. Is that a sufficient amount of time for you to do so? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, in case CE 19050607, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I found the property in violation of 18106A, 18162A, and 2232A. Respondent has 45 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $200 per day may issue. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Matter number 81, CE 19060548, and matter number 82, CE 19060552, Division Avenue. Good morning, Your Honor. This is 81 and 82? Yes, it's the same property. <clears throat> Good morning. Officer Cartwright, so what's going on? Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. Uh, the property at 1913 Division Avenue was originally cited on June 26 of 2017, I'm sorry, 2019 for no renter's license or certificate of use. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on June 25th of 2019, as well as City Hall. Um, I have spoken to the property owner who has actually applied for the license, but a rental inspection is due, so I can't actually comply it without the, the inspection. Um, I will be meeting with him later on this afternoon to make sure that that happens. So you're the owner? Yes, sir. And your name? Mohammed Hanan. Okay. And you applied for a rental license? You just haven't completed the inspection yet? Correct. So, yeah, I mean, I'm a new landlord in the area, so a lot of things I did not know. So when officer walked me through, and we'll work with them, definitely. So here's the, I, the license that I applied. Uh, I'm, I'm going to follow up on that. Uh, what happened that in the beginning, um, I live in Wellington, so all the mail went to the, the rental property. It did not, did not hit me. So um, yeah, I can show you the evidence on, on June 20th. I believe you. I, what happened that I sent an email. Most likely Mr. Phil is very busy and then maybe he, email is not the best way to communicate with him. So on June 24th, I sent an email asking him what the list of the item, is there any documentation? Because I heard. And currently three of the five units are in eviction. So tenants were actually hiding the mail. I was going there and not finding any mail of the code enforcement. So only on July 12th, I was able to come to this office and then get the, the list of items that I have to do. Is your Wellington mailing address listed in the property record? Property well, appraisers? so I receive everything on, over there, my mortgage statement after closing. So I did not, I would assume that, that all other communication will go there. Well, the city is always, I mean, this is important to remember, especially if you hold property in other cities, the city is always going to mail their notices to the address listed in the property appraisers records. So you want to make sure when you buy a piece of property that the mailing address is where you're going to be receiving mail because their obligation is simply to mail it to whatever address you list as your mailing address in the property appraiser's records. Do you understand? I, I understand, sir. As a new landlord, yes. And this is the thing that I'm learning. But the good thing is that we are willing to work on that. We have done a lot of work in the property. I can show you some of the prior picture of the property. It was a, almost a trash can. Before we get to that, let me see what the city is seeking here. For this particular violation, uh, <clears throat> we're seeking that the... Property owner come into compliance with obtaining the rental license within 10 days or $100 per day. He's already done that. This case also ties into the second one, which is number 82, with a list of other violations that are for All the right, same well, property. Let's, let's do one case at a time. Is there the 
So he's waiting on the inspection. Is there a reason to believe that the inspection cannot be accomplished in 10 days? Is there a condition on the property that is an issue for the inspection? That would be based off of him and his contractor, based on some of the violations that are going on with it. Uh, with the renter's license, you have to make sure that um, everything within uh, side the property basically meets uh, minimum housing standards. Currently, right now, with what's going on with it, it doesn't. Okay, so typically on rental violation notices, we typically in West Palm Beach, or at least since I've been here, give them 30 days. Is there a reason that I'm giving that you were requesting 10 instead of the typical 30 days? Based off of uh, the history of what was going on with it, from the original time that the notice was actually sent out back in June, um, the property owner had ample time to actually achieve that. That's why I requested 10 days. So it's basically to motivate them enough to get it done quicker, a lot faster since he's had substantial time before that. Your Honor, I can show you the email that we reflected all the good things. Um, immediately, we put the schedule. Um, we handled, for example, all the exterior windows. We handled that cases. We also handled the landscaping. When I purchased the house in April, it was in a devastating conditions. I can show you the pictures and everything. And I changed all the carpet to the tiles. I do the tar um, termite fumigation. One of the things the officer uh, complained in his very first report that, that he found, in, in this office was telling me that he found termite. Then I challenged him. I have the picture of the time of fumigation, Your Honor, and I have all the receipt. I paid thousands of dollars, $4,000 for time of fumigation, $5,000 for other fixes. And I, I, I'm willing I, feel like, to I feel like you're, you're debating the second case here, and, and the only issue here right now is whether or not you're going to obtain a rental license for the tenant on the property. Right, and the city wants to give you 10 days to do that, I'm asking you, is that reasonable under your circumstances? No, sir, I need at least 30 days. If you tell can me, tell me why. Um, first of all, this property is very old. What I'm discovering is a lot of permit issues. Some, some tenants put some fans, which is not without any permit. Um, for the egress, like for the stairs, I have to apply permits. So all these things, is, as, a new, is a, as a new landlord, um, I have to go through all these things. So the 10 days will put me pressure, even though I have all the intention to do the good to the property. So I, I need your special consideration. Give me 30 days, sir. Special Magistrate, I would be willing to give the property owner 30 days to obtain that license since this issue coincides with the, pre, the, uh, the next case going forward. Right, so let's, so I, I'm in agreement on the 30 days, too. So let's, let's do this. In CE 1906-0548. Make the following findings of fact and life. When notice is sufficient, I found the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property into compliance or a fine of $100 per day may issue. All right. Let's go to the second case, which is apparently what everybody wants to talk about. Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. The property at 1913 Division Avenue was originally cited on June 27th of 2019 for failure to secure permit, safe egress, clean unsanitary conditions, <clears throat> excuse me, repair of interior walls and floors, repair of external doors and windows, repair of external <clears throat> stairways, equipment maintenance and kitchen, landscape maintenance, excessive overgrowth, interior electrical issues with electrical outlets, maintaining cold and hot water lines, and garbage can placement. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on June 26 of 2019, as well as City Hall. Um, all violations are still, excuse me, still current. Um, I have spoken with the property owner who is making some of the repairs, but not enough to actually to comply them. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within 45 days or $600 per day thereafter. All right, Mr. Anand, so the city says you got all kinds of violations on the property, and they want to give you 45 days. What say you? Um, I will say I need 60 days, and I can show you some of the progress that I'm making. And if you, if you, if we allow sure, me. show them to the officer first. I have seen them, Special Magistrate. Do you have officer. any objections? No, sir. All right, let me see. You have to speak on the mic. All right, so tell me what I'm looking at. Okay. So, first of all, um, the building was is in very bad shape. It was in 1950s. That's what I heard during the closing. Um, 
And all these things, when, when I close, they're not, not, nothing of them is showing up as a violation. So I, I was totally surprised when I first see that these long list of items are pending. But which is fine, we're gonna address that. Um, so in the beginning what happened, there's a communication delay, but right now Officer Phil is very helping. So once we establish the communication, we like to work with him as a team, and we like to achieve all the items. Um, only thing that will be a little bit riskier, I mean, I have to see if there anything uh, related to permitting is taking time. That's the thing, the cushion I like to keep in the plan. So let me see if I understand you correctly. So you're not contesting that these violations exist. You're just asking for 60 days to bring them into compliance. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir. All right. So I, I will, I'm going to give you the 60 days, but, um, but you got to get on this, okay? Yes, sir. All Thank right. you. In case CE1906052, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this official found the property in violation of the listed code sections, I give the respondent 60 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of up to $500 per day may issue. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Your Excuse orders me. will be mailed, sir. Matter number 57, CE1906002, 1028 Adams Street. I'm chop them all over the place today. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On the June 7th, 2019, the property at 1028 Adams Street was cited for failure to secure building permits. Required inspections must pass all required inspections. Safe egress, remove wood from windows and all trip hazards throughout the property. Roof repair, rotten wood throughout the prop, throughout the structure. External doors and windows, front door and rear door in need of replacement. Painting of structure, landscape maintenance, uh, removal of stump in the rear of the property, trash can placement, landscape areas must be sodded, and outdoor storage. Property was posted July 19th, 2019. Certified mail was sent June 10th. Certified mail has been received June 11th. Um, this, this property was originally inspected by, um, Officer Cartwright. Um, the property owner was not satisfied with his inspection. I was directed by my supervisor to go out and assess the property. I did do so with two of my colleagues. Upon inspection, I noted the, the laundry list of, of violations. I then proceeded to, to correspond with the property owner in ways to comply, what would be required to comply, and pointed, tried to point out the violations. At that time, the property owner became very irate. Um, I could not get anything across to her um, and at the end of the exchange she requested me to send notice and that was I'm sorry she requested what me to send the notice of violation notice. Okay. and that's what I have done now in light of what has transpired with this property and the property owner city is requesting 90 days to come into compliance or a $250 a day filing be assessed to the property until compliance is achieved. Ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Uh, my name is Zen Lu. I'm the owner of the uh, Perfect Instrument LLC. She owns this property. I'm sorry, can you spell your last name for me? Uh, L-I-U. Okay, so tell me what's going on with your property, ma'am. Uh, yeah, uh, he talked about something. Uh, this property was originally inspected, um, I think it was May sometime by Officer Carcer Phil. Cartwright. Yeah. 
Um, so he gave me a list, so another violation. So I look at that, so I was working on that. And on June 7, I'm just trying to clear out what happening. Mm -hmm. On June 7, uh, I called for another inspection because Phil wasn't there. So I think Mitch sent uh, Powell and another two guys. So it was three officers here. I was upset that time on the inspection because he gave me a total of different list about, uh, you know, different from what Phil was uh, um, giving me. So I fixed some stuff, but then he get a totally new one. So that's why I was upset. So I called, uh, I called Mitch. And uh, later I was on vacation from June, and the later that month on June, I talked with Mike Joyce, their supervisor, and he gave me a combined list so he can, you know, his list and the field's list put together so I can have something to work on instead of two lists that are totally different. So uh, right now I'm working on that. We, we applied for uh, the permit for the exterior door, two exterior door. Uh, I'm not sure if we already have it, so, after like uh, 90 days, I agree with the 90 days, and you know, we're going to fix with, uh, uh, with the list was Mac Jones gave us. So you agree that these issues are issues and you, uh, you think you can get them fixed in 90 days, ma'am? I'm trying, you know, because it depends on the contractor and the permit and, you know, and the inspection if something coming up and uh, if 90 days we can, we, we apply for an extension, right? Well, if I issue an order that says 90 days, it's going to be 90 days. Uh, so I can mean, you give me like 120 or, you know, a little bit more? What's the city's position on that? Um, in light that there is no record of any permits being pulled, um, I would be in agreement to give 120 days. <coughs> so let's see what we got here. We got roof repair, external doors, paint, landscaping. Is there a reason to believe that this couldn't be accomplished in 90 days? Um, just because she needs permits for the stucco work, she's going to need permits for the doors, she's going to need permits for the new water heater that she installed there. Um, If she had already applied for the, the permits, I would say yes, but she has not accomplished that. No, we have the permit. I have, there, there's no record of any permits being applied for. You checked I checked today? it yesterday. Oh, okay, let me talk, I'll, I'll go check later. Yeah, that's what I say. I already paid the guy uh, money for, for apply for the permit. He said he did like, a, not last Friday, the Friday before last. Uh, so I, I don't know at the status of the permit. So it take a while to secure a contractor and you know apply for the permit, and it take a little while for them to do the work and the, you know inspection. So all right, I, I think I understand. Okay, yeah. what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to give you the 120 days, but I'm going to put a more substantial fine at the end of this because I really do want this to get done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing it. In CE 19060092, I'm going to make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, I find property in violation of the listed code sections. Respondent has 120 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $500 per day may issue. So you got your 120 days, but you got to get it done, okay? Okay, good. Thank you. Where to next? Matter number 44, CE 19050308-1268, The Point Drive. Sir, have you been sworn in? Gabriel Perez. Have you been sworn in? Oh, yes, at yes. the beginning. Okay. Okay. Officer Levine, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. This property was cited for field to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Um, service was accomplished by certified mail, which was signed for 171 2019. There's an active application in the system for a uh, rental license. It's just that we're having challenges in getting this inspection done at this unit. So the city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. Sir, can you tell me your name, please? Gabriel Perez. 
Mr. Perez, what is your relationship to the owner of this property? I'm the realtor of the owner. The owner is a company with the... Argumax ABC LLC? Correct. And you're the realtor that represents this company, sir? Yes, sir. So tell me what's going on. Well, I'm trying to get the appointment with the tenant to get the inspection. The tenant was in vacation, and after that, he's working since Key West to Jackson Building Restaurants. So I had no time. He, he gave him, he done, give me. So you've applied for the permit, you just haven't done the inspection yes. yet? Yes, I did apply for the permit, and I'm trying to schedule the appointment with the tenant with All also right. sex. I'll give you 30 days to do that. Okay. In case CE 19050308 and make the following findings of fact and life, I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $200 per day admission. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Number 43, CE 19050288, Village Boulevard, Unit 2216. Someone here for that? It's you. Okay. This property was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Certified May was returned on 5 24, 2019. The city uh, property was posted on 6 28, 2019. I've had no communication with the property owner. There is no active application in the system. Verification of occupancy was done on yesterday through the property management. The city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. What was verified, that there's a tenant on this property? Yes, through property management. Okay. So you talked to the property management, did they explain why they don't have a rental license? No, property management for the complex. Not okay. for this. Oh, okay. Not the owner. Not right. the owner. All right. In case CE 19050288, I make the following findings of fact in life. I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $200 per day admission. Number 45, CE 19050312-1401 Village Boulevard, <laughs> Unit 917. This property too was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Certified mail was returned on 6-3-2019. Property was posted on 6-28-2019. There is an application in the system for a rental license. First contact was made on 5-28-2019. Second contact was made on 7-24-2019. There was no response. Occupancy was verified through property management at this complex. So he's requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. All right, in case CE 19050312, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient for the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $200 per day, Mr. Matter number 50, CE 19050340-1401 Village Boulevard, Unit 2327. This property too was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Certified mail was returned on 6 30, 2019. The property was posted on 6 24, 7, sorry, 7 24, 2019. I've had no contact with the property owner and there is no active application in the system. However, occupancy was verified through property management. The city is requesting 30 days to come in compliance or $200 a day thereafter. All right, KCE 19050340, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $200 per day, may issue. Thank you. Matter number one, CE 19060345-3700 North Australian Avenue. She's sworn in. Good morning, Laura Borso, City of West Palm Beach, Chronic Nuisance. 3700 North Australian, a complaint on 6-19-2019 came in from, our neighborhood, or from the neighborhood regarding the condition of this property and structure. The south side of this structure was hit by a car. Uh, the neighbor uh, said that that was done in 2018. That has yet to be verified as far as the time frame is concerned. Um, that section of this case was referred to the building department in order to determine the structural integrity of the structure itself. Um, it was inspected by myself on 619-19. On 620, a declaration of chronic nuisance was issued. 
but it was sent certified mail and regular mail and posted at the property. It was cited for overgrowth, trash and debris, fence repair or replacement, unsanitary and an unsecured pool. Those issues were cited from the previous case, CE 18090224. And at the initial time of this inspection, there were also inoperative vehicles and the uh, um, entire, as you can see, the entire south side of the property has been boarded up. An action plan was required on 7-8, July 8th of 2019, which was not received. So on 7-10, a notice of violation uh, was sent again, certified mail and regular mail. That notice of violation was signed for on 7-17. 7-22, the daughter of the owner, Adrian Marcel, who is the daughter of Beatrice, came to the office to speak with me regarding this issue. Um, I unfortunately was out. She left her number, I called her uh, the next day. Uh, Ms. Marcel told me that her mother, who does own this home, lives in Atlanta. She is obviously very well aware of the conditions of the property, of the structure. Um, then it became a name game, blame game. Uh, the brother is supposed to be taking care of the property. He isn't. Um, she was, she did inform me that her mother has received both of the notices that were sent. Um, she was supposed to be here at the hearing today. Obviously, she is not, as well as the brother. Um, I did explain the nuisance process, gave her a, a little extra time to maybe get an action plan together. Um, that right there, she came in to complain about the fact that she has no um, legal, um, she has nothing legal to do with the, with the property and wanted her name taken off the notices. So, you know, since there was no other notice to be sent, it really was, it was a moot point at that, at that Why point. Why was her name on the notice? Just it was on there because it was, that's what was in the system at the time. Papa had that, it had her name on there. Now she has since gone and um, removed her name from Papa but it was on there and I explained to her that that's why her name and her address, that address where that was sent was, is her actual physical address, which has since been changed to the um, Australian address and just her mother's name. So she has removed herself from, mm. from the legal paperwork in PAPA, as well as the tax rolls. So, um, but again, as I said, she did let me know that her mom has received both letters um, and she's spoken with her. Unfortunately, nothing's been done, so them speaking to each other really isn't helping the, the property any, nor has it helped the, the surrounding area. So um, the city requests that the special magistrate uphold the declaration of chronic nuisance and enter chronic nuisance service order, allowing for the city to abate the nuisances and charge the costs to the owner. Can you describe for me the conditions on the property that you believe constitute a chronic nuisance? Um, the overgrowth, the fence on, which isn't very well seen to the, that picture there, if you went past that bush, all of that fence is sort of just tied together. That's the problem. The backyard, that's easily accessible, that pool. That's mm -hmm. a safety concern. Um, obviously, it's all green. The, I the, can pool, the pool is not secured? It is not. Mm -hmm. um, if you're facing the house, um, the left side of the house, the fence for whatever reason was removed, and I'm not sure. There, that, there should be a fence there, and it's not. There is no fence there. There's nothing to stop anyone from going into that backyard. Um, and the pool water is not, is I'm not sorry? Being, the pool water is not being treated properly? Correct, yeah. correct. Now I can either have the pool water treated, or I can just have the pool um, boarded, which I probably will just do, do a boarding on the well, pool. Wait, I'm going to... I'm not going to tell the city how to do its job, but if it's an unsecured pool, it needs to be secured. Right. Well, yeah, and that's what I'm asking for. <coughs> and again, as I said, the, the building department is working on the structure itself, so. All right. In case uh, CE 19060345, I'm going to get the following findings of fact and law. I hereby find a pattern of nuisance activity exists on this property. I affirm the city's declaration that the property is, in fact, a chronic nuisance. I hereby enter a chronic nuisance service order authorizing the city to perform any nuisance abatement services that are needed on the property and to charge the cost of that abatement against the property and property owner. Thank you. Matter number two, CE 19060434, 931-33rd Street has complied. Number three, CE 19070004, 904-31st Street. Good morning. Good morning. Um, 
Ray Leung City, West Palm Beach Code Compliance. 904 31st Street was originally cited on 7119 with the notice of violation posted at the property and City Hall on 71019. Certified mail was sent on 72 of 2019. This property was cited for 18103B exterior repair, 786 address characters, 34102A inoperative vehicle, and 94302A4 fence repair. I have not made contact with the owner, and all violations still do exist. The city is requesting an additional 30 days to come into compliance or $150 per day until compliance is achieved. Notice with certified mail and posting? Certified mail was sent on 7 2 of 2019. When was the last time you were at this property? Um, that would be Monday. And at that time, did all these? Yep, all the violations still exist. No progress was made. Um, a lot of complaints coming from the neighbors about this house um, throughout the years as well. So, no progress. What's wrong with the uh, the roof walls and foundation? Um, keep going. Well, one of the the photos will show that the um, the gutters on the eaves needs repairing. Uh huh. So this is about the gutters. Oh, and the, I guess Correct. the roof needs repair here. Correct. And that shrunk. Is it an inoperable vehicle? Yes, it doesn't have um, a license, um, any tags on it, no license plate, and the, the, the tire is deflated. And there are no numbers on this house? Correct. And the fence? And the fence is um, actually just resting against the garage. It's not um, erected. It fell over, and some, one of the neighbors just rested against the home, so it's in disrepair. All right, in KCE 1907 make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice sufficient from the property in violation of Code Sections 18103B, 34102A, 78.6, and 94302A4, respond as 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $150 per day, my issue. Thank you. Number four, CE 1907-0131-3109, Windsor Avenue. Ray Leung City, West Palm Beach Code Compliance. 3109 Windsor Avenue was originally cited on 7-9 of 2019 with the notice of violation posted at the property and City Hall on 7-10 of 2019. Subject mail was sent on 7-10 of 2019. This property was cited for 74 4th C3, 94 446-2, 18106B, and 18215B. I have not made contact with the owner, and all violations still do exist at this property. The overgrowth at this property does pose a potential threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the community by being a possible habitat for pests, rodents, vermin, etc. Therefore, the city is requesting an additional three days to come into compliance or abatement. Is there any evidence that anybody is maintaining this property at all? No, no evidence at all. So this is about the overgrowth that I can see in the picture, the grass that looks. Yeah, correct. And it's on Windsor. It's on a very, um, it's on a very busy street. It's seen all the time. I believe the owner is in uh, Miami, and it's just an, um, a vacant property for sale, and it's not being maintained at all. And you believe the grass is high enough that it can conceal rodents, snakes, and other correct. dangers to the neighborhood? Correct. All right, in case CE 1907-0131, one, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of the listed code sections, I give the respondent 30 days to bring the property in compliance. In the absence of compliance, I hereby authorize the city to enter property and abate any and all violations. I hereby assess the cost of said abatement against the property and property owner. Thank you. That's three days, right? Number five will be called with the lien reductions. Matter number six, CE 1904 Excuse me, Special Magistrate, I apologize. Um, we have a um, need to clarify. Did you indicate on the last case 30 days or three days? Three days. You were seeking three days? Three days. Okay, so I, I did not hear you correctly. Okay. Let's make that five days. I'm going to amend it to five days. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Matter number six, CE 19040456839, Brandon Prescott Lane has complied. Number seven, CE 19040475, 200 North Ware Drive has complied. Number eight, CE 19040550310, Elaine Circle West. Officer Luster, West Palm Code Enforcement. 
This property was cited for a certificate of use and rental license. Property was posted on 725-19. This is a renewal. This is the same owner since 2015, and the unit is occupied. I'm asking for 10 days or $100 per day. Was notice sent by certified mail? Certified mail return. And you also posted the property. Have you had any contact with uh, the owner here? No, nope, no contact. And you verified that there is a resident? So tenant is occupied. All right, KCE 19040550. I make the following findings of fact in life. I notice it's sufficient. I found the property in violation of 181 162A and 2232A. Respondent has 10 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day. May issue. Thank you. Matter number nine, CE 19060025-4295, Grosner Court. Don Williams, Code Enforcement. Signed this property for a junk and abandoned vehicle on the property and landscape maintenance. Um, I cited the property on J June 4th, 2019. Certified mail was sent out June 27th, 19. And I posted this property July 23rd of 2019. Contact has been made with the property owner, but as of yesterday, they have not uh, complied any violations. So I'm asking 30 days to comply or $100 a day thereafter. So what's the junk vehicle? Those two vehicles, both of those vehicles both of in the driveway. Why are they junk vehicles? They're not flat tire and the, t the tags have expired on them. And what's the issue associated with the landscape maintenance? Overgrowth. Okay. Trees in the back and rear, coconuts, palms are overgrown. All right, I can see it. All right, in case CE 19060025, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient. I find the property in violation of 34102A and 944462. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day. May issue. Matter number 10, CE 19060555-1401 Village Boulevard, Unit CU-1. Don Williams, Code Enforcement. Cited this property for landscape maintenance and hurricane hazard trees. I uh, cited the property on June 27th. 35 mail sent out July 12th, and the property was posted July 23rd. Uh, no, con no contact made with the property owners. Uh, so I'm asking 30 days to comply or $100 a day thereafter. So what's wrong with the landscaping? Well, the tree's overgrown. We got a complaint from the neighbors, neighboring uh, neighborhood, and they got dead vegetation in the trees, which will be a, ha a hazard during the hurricane. Are there any pictures of the trees? Should have some pictures. No pictures? Case number 598. Yes. 555 is the last three digits. No photos? For some reason that photo didn't get in there, but <laughs> there are dead vegetation and the trees are overgrown on the property. So does your testimony that the trees are, Definitely are, are not being maintained and that they're overgrown? Yes, sir. And that there is dead vegetation in those trees? Yes, sir. Okay, in case CE 19060555, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient. I found the property in violation of 18106K and 744C1. Responded as 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day. Issue. Matter number 11, CE 19060598-4108 Shelley Road North. Don Williams Code Enforcement. Uh, cited this property for height rack tree. Um, I cited it on June 28th. Uh, 35 mail sent July 1st, and the property was posted July 23rd. Contact has been made with the property owner. Um, I told him I would uh, agree to give him 180 days to comply, and if not, he would have to replace the tree if the tree doesn't uh, live. One more pictures. Yeah. 
-hmm. Okay. <laughs> We're missing your pics, huh? We're missing some pictures. There's no reason. So while she's trying to find that, why don't you, so tell me what's the story with this tree? What is High it like? tree. It, it's been cut back severely, but I believe this one would live. But I want to give him six months to monitor the tree. And uh, if not, um, we have to replace it. <clears throat> um, Special Magistrate, there was an update on Friday in um, Community Plus. And Natalie just informed me that some of the pictures were deleted. So well, that's unfortunate. That why. But, uh, I mean, but you're here. You can testify to it. Okay. All right. <coughs> so you want to give them uh, yeah, six days. months to monitor, and if uh, the tree doesn't survive, they're supposed to replace it after six months? Yes, Is that sir. Uh-huh. All right. That's reasonable. Okay. In case CE 19060598, make the following findings of fact and law. If I know it's sufficient, I find the property in violation of 944462B3. I give the respondent six months to monitor the tree. If the tree does not survive, I order the respondent to replace it after six months. Matter number 12, CE 19700692612, James River Road. Don Williams, Code Enforcement, cited this property for unsanitary pool, uh, failure to comply for abatement, and uh, provide uh, screening around the pool. No contact with the owners of the property. I actually cited the property July 3rd. Uh, certified mail sent out the 3rd, July 3rd, and I also posted the property July 23rd. So I'm asking 15 days to comply the pool or an abatement on that pool. And for the screening, I'm asking 30 days to replace the screens or $100 a day thereafter. So that split order. <laughs> Sorry, is this pool unsecured? Um, yeah, because the screening around the pool is, is missing a lot of the screening. There's a fence that goes to the rear, but again, those screening are missing. So you can actually get to the pool without uh, opening the door of the screening enclosure. And there's no, then the water clarity is obviously bad. This strikes me as a, um, a more immediate concern than 30 days. No, no, 15 days for that. And 30 days for the last, just the screen itself. I want a split order. Have you had any contact with anybody on this oh, property? Is anyone there. living here? I'm sorry? Is anyone living on this property to no, your knowledge? No, nobody's living there. It's vacant. It could be immediate abatement. I'm fine with that. My concern is that a child is going to enter here and um, okay. something bad is going to happen. Immediate abatement is fine. All right. In case CE 19070069, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice is sufficient, I find the property in violation of 18106N, 18215B, and uh, 18102 I make further finding that the condition of the property is a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. I order the respondent to bring the property immediately into compliance. In the absence of immediate compliance, I hereby authorize the city of West Palm Beach to enter the property and abate each of these violations. I hereby charge the cost of set abatement against the property and property owner. Thank you. Number 13, CE 19070043 at 0736th Street. Good morning, Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 807 36th Street was cited on 7219. The property and City Hall were posted on 7519, and certified mail was sent on 7519. The property was cited for excessive growth, cleanup of center of right of way, and fence repair. The city is asking for a split order for the excessive growth and the cleanup of right of way. The city is asking for three days or abatement. And for the fence, the city is asking for 30 days or $100 per day. So tell me about what the immediate concern is with the excessive growth and the right of way. Um, so if someone is in a wheelchair, you see the, the um, vegetation is growing out onto the, the sidewalk. So it's um, obstructing. It's the obstructing sidewalk. the sidewalk? Yes. Is anyone living at this home that you know of? I'm not that I know of. And you think the grass can be habitat for vermin? I do believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. 
the, the grass on the property is over, overgrown as well, it looks like, right? That's correct. Have you seen any efforts to maintain this property at all? No. All right, in case uh, CE1907-0043, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 18106-B, 74-4-C-5, and 94-302-A-4. As to 18106-B and 74-4-C-5, I make further finding that said condition is a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. I order the respondents to bring the property into compliance within three days. In the absence of compliance, thereby authorize the city to enter the property and abate these violations. As to 94302A4, I give the respondent 30 days to bring the property into compliance or fine of $150 per day. Number 14, CE1907-0046-840 44th Street. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, 844 44th Street, was cited on 7219. The property and City Hall were posted on 7519, and certified mail was sent on 7519. The property was cited for um, roof slash wall repair, external windows and door repair, exterior paint, clean and sanitary, and boarding certificate. The property has since complied with the boarding certificate. I've had no contact with the owner. All other violations remain. The city is asking for an additional 60 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Why 60 days? Because um, they will need to pull permits for the roof repair. So it has a tarp on it currently. And you believe that's a reasonable time frame to get this accomplished? Yes. All right, in case CE1907-0046. Oh, hold on a sec. So it's a roof. What's wrong with the doors and windows? Um, it's well. It's the same code for the window repair, but the windows on the side that were boarded, those windows are broken. Okay, and I can see obviously that there are portions of this building that are not painted. What's the clean and sanitary? Is there debris on the property? Yes. So there's trash and debris on the side and also in the dr driveway. Okay. All right, in case CE 1907-0046, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice it's sufficient, I find the property in violation of 18103B, 18103E, 18103J, and 18106A. Respond has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day. May sure. Matter number 15, CE 1907-0050-930-45th Street. Excuse me, Special Magistrate, yep. on the last case, again, um, did you say 60 days or 30 days? I said 60 days. That's what you were requesting, right? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Did I, I just, I'm, okay, okay. I misheard. I apologize. I got one right. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, 930 45th Street, was cited on 7219. The property and city hall were posted on 7519, and certified mail was sent on 7519. The property was cited for, cited for excessive growth and obstruction of right of way. I've had contact with the owner. The property has since complied. However, um, the city is asking for a finding of fact as the property was comp um, complied after um, the compliance date. What was the compliance date? Um, the compl I think the compliance date was July 15th, but the property was also um, previously cited for the same um, violations. And they complied it after the July 15th date? Correct. All right, in case CE 1907-0050, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient from the property was in violation of 18106B and 78-1, has since come to compliance, but after the required compliance date. Matter number 16, CE 1907-0326-3809, Australian Court. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, 3809 Australian Court, was cited on 71719. The property and city hall were posted on 72219, and certified mail was sent on 72319. The property was cited for clean and sanitary, inoperative vehicle, and trash can placement. The city is asking for um, three days to come into compliance or $150 per day until compliance is achieved. I've had no contact with the owner. This property um, was cited in May for the same issues as well. Why three days? Because um, for the inoperative vehicle, um, they do have a tag for it, but for some reason they take the tag off of it, so it doesn't take that long for them to move the trash can and to put the tag back on the car. For the um, clean and sanitary, it's just for the garbage that's being stored 
in front of the house, which doesn't really take a long time for them to comply. Generally, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the three-day time frame just because of the length of time it takes mail to get to somebody, mm -hmm. um, unless it's an exigent circumstance or a danger to the property. So I'm going to give them five days. Okay. In case CE 19070326, make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 18106A and 34102B and 7434A1J. And where is the trash can, by the way? I don't see it there. Oh. Yeah, that's where they, they just They just leave it there? Yes. All right. Respondent has five days to bring the property into compliance or find the amount of $150 per day may issue. Thank you. Number 17, CE 19040443818 Little Street has complied. And I'm going to jump to the lane reductions. Okay. Okay, other matter, CE 18100084, 9th Street. Mitch Posner, Code Enforcement. Case ending in 084 for 1114 9th Street, date ordered 125 of 18, fine started 17 of 19, rent for 44 days, total is $8,800 at $200 a day, date of compliance 220 of 19, uh, same owner or clarify the estate of the same owner. Uh, city's asking for standard 25%. I have on here 3,000 is what's due. Is that, is that, is this a, a typo? We do have 3,000. What? 1114 9th Street. That is okay. These things happen. All right, ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Um, good morning. My name is Jolinda Herring, and I am a trustee for the Herring Family Trust, which is the current owner of this property. Okay, so tell me what you're asking for and why I should grant it to you. So we are asking for a reduction um, in the lien amount on this particular property. Um, this property um, has been owned by several different owners. One, the original owner, I think, bought the property back in the 1940s. Uh, she subsequently passed in 1996. The property then passed to her son in 2002. And then in 2003, it passed to his sister, Mary Herring, which is actually my mother. Um, and then in 2011, that property was then put into the Herring Family Trust. Um, and during all that time, um, the trustee, sole trustees were James and Mary Herring, a husband and wife, um, which, who are my parents. And they were, a, they were handling their own financial affairs. So in 2017, the husband passed away at the age of 83. And then in 2018, um, the wife passed away at the age of 85. So as you can see that they were elderly, and I'm guessing some things got missed. So we uh, became trustees during the probate of the estate, which is continuous to go on at this point um, in 2019, which is when we became aware of the violations. I'm not sure where the 
notices were going prior to that. They may have been going to the previous address, which was my mother, um, but she was, again, you know. they were probably going to whatever the address was listed on the property appraiser's records. Right, so I'm saying I'm, I'm not exactly sure where those were, but we have since gotten that all corrected. Um, I am receiving the notices, and once we found out about the violations, we did move to bring the property into compliance, which it is in compliance now. So I feel like that we have met the criteria to request the lien reduction. Um, we were not the trustees and the caretakers of the property at the time that the violation and the lien was placed. Um, we are now. Um, we have also cleaned up any other additional liens on any other properties that were formerly owned by Mary Herring and or the Herring Family Trust that has been taken care of. We have brought the property um, into compliance and I feel like we did it um, in the time frame that was granted to us. So what are you asking me for? I'm asking for zero. <laughs> Because of the fact that, I mean, at this point, the monies that have been put in the properties have come um, from the personal assets of the trustees and not any assets um, of the trust or the estate. There were no assets um, in the estate itself. Well, I can't do zero because there was a violation here and the violation okay. went on for 44 days. Okay. Uh, the city is asking for what? 25%, which would be what, 2,200 if I do my math correctly? Yes, sir. So the city is asking that we pay 2,600? 2,200. 2,200. The city is offering to reduce the fine from 8,800 to 2,200. How does that sound? Uh, what time frame would we have to pay that amount of money? What do you need? 30 days. City's amenable to 60. I can give you 60. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll reduce it to 2,000 even. Case uh, CE 1810084. Reduce to 2,000 payable within 60 days. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. We're going to go to other matter. <laughs> CE 17050497, Australian Court. The lack of numbering is a problem. Go ahead. Case ending in 497 to 3916 Australian Court. Date ordered 621 of 17. Fine started 72 of 17. Ran for 400 days. Total $40,000. Daily fine of $100 a day. Date of compliance 86 of 18. Uh, in this case, the applicant is actually the, the previous owner who did incur the violation in the first place. Only mitigating factor is they, they blame the property manager at the time. City's asking for standard 25%. Sir, can you tell me your name? Tell me what you're asking for and why I should grant it to you. My name is Garen Tonesio. Um At the time of the violation, we were not the property manager. Uh, the owner is uh, foreign national. He wasn't aware of anything. The property manager that was handling this property really let the property go. And once I again, uh, I was, once I was aware of it, I started to work with the violation and clearing it up. Um, I'm asking for a five percent reduction. All right. So let me understand the situation here. You own the property. Yes. At the time, yes. Yes. But you had a property manager managing the property. Yes. Which really didn't do us justice. We weren't, we weren't aware of anything. I mean, the property, he was an out of town owner and you know, it's just. And your property manager did not do a very good job. Yes, sir. So once we fired him and I take it over. Well, presumably the notices should have come to you, no? We're out of, we're, it's a Grenada. We were in Grenada at the time. So the notices were going to him. So once we, you know, so put the property on the market, get the lien search, find out that there's something wrong with the property, we start to address the violations. Sir, sir, just to be clear, 
Uh, the violations that ran fines for include fence repair, trash can and view overgrowth, missing grass, trash and debris, paint needed, and clean and sanitary had to be pressure washed. So it wasn't like there were just a couple of minor things. It was. Uh, How would you characterize the gravity of the violation? How would I characterize the gravity? Uh, since it ran for 400. I'm trying to use these standards the city gave me. <laughs> uh, I would I consider the it a, code. That's I would consider job. it a nuisance for over a year. It ran for 400 days. Obviously, very visible violations. Were there any prior or subsequent code violations on this property? I'm sorry, sir. Were there any prior or subsequent code violations on this property that no, you know sir. of? No, no. There's no noteworthy history which is why we're only asking for the standard 25%. Does the applicant own any other properties on the, in the city and have any other code cases? No, sir. Negative. And as far as you know, no effort was made to correct these until 400 days had passed? Yes, sir. So we honestly weren't aware of it, sir. And once we got knowledge of it, we did expedite get it worked on. Sir. My question to you, city, sir, is the city is offering 25%, which means they're willing to reduce this by 75%, considering this went on for 400 days. Why is that not a reasonable offer by the city? We really can't afford it at this point in time, so that's why we're asking for a reduction. Well, I, I can take into account your hardship, so tell me what the hardship is. Well, we lot, when we bought the property, sir, we bought the property at a higher price. Uh, because it, it, we, we trust the property manager who was handling it. He's the one who sold us the property. Okay, and we, we believe that he was doing, what, doing us justice. We actually lost on the sale because we had to go in there and remodel the property. We had the windows redone, we had the grass cut. We did a lot of stuff once we find out that this violation exists. Tell me about your personal hardship. Why can't you afford to pay $10,000? Because I gotta be honest, the rest of the stuff that I can reduce it on doesn't really rule in your favor. So the only thing that you can really give me is hardship. So I need to know what, a hard, what, what the hardship is. Well, it, 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 it cost us about, it cost us around, I think around $15,000, sir. Because we changed out the windows, the doors, and all that <laughs> stuff that was done. All right, so the city wants 10? Yes, sir. You always make me do the math in my head. Um, I'll reduce it to uh, 7,500 payable within 60 days. Other matter, CE 17110282550 Okeechobee Boulevard, Unit 508. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm trying to find. Uh, I, don't, I don't see it. Last page. Mine's cut off. Yeah, so is mine. What's the case number on this one? CE one seven one one zero two eight two. Okay, and this is 550 Okeechobee Boulevard, number 508? Yes, sir. And I, I, the respondent's cut off here, so who's the, who's the property owner? Yes, sir. Right here. That's this right. is the property owner here. So Sheena Tayana. Is that you? Okay. All right, go ahead. That is not her. That's not her. Case ending in 282, 550 Okeechobee Boulevard, number 508. Date order 221.18. Fine started 324.18. Rent for 297 days. Current total $297,000. Daily fine $100 a day. Date of compliance 115 of 19. Uh, same owner, my understanding is there's a, from the application, is there's a divorce involved in this. And the wife has the property. The husband incurred the, the, the violation, uh, which was for no rental license. 
Uh, normally we'd ask for standard 25%. Let me correct something. Total is 29,700, not 297,000. That's a big difference. Very big difference. I read a zero wrong. Uh, cities ask for standard 25%. Ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Hi, um, my name is Alisa Rover. I'm the one that uh, divorced Robert Rover. He is by fraud, fraud my signature and stole the property. So we filed the fraud claim. Five years we were in court and now I want the property back. It's, on, uh, it's back. When we got the property back, we realized he did not pay uh, maintenance, mortgage, he didn't pay, he didn't get the license. The moment I got it back, I got license for last year and this year, both license here, and I had no access to the property at all. Um, he was ordered by judge to pay child support, to, to keep everything up to date. He never, he still doesn't pay child support. He never paid anything, and um, I had no access to the property to do anything. I didn't know about it. But the moment I won the property back in court, I have all the documents, um, I filed and I got license. And you uh, brought the property into compliance? Yes, uh, we paid mortgage in full, we pay maintenance in full, and we got license for last year and this year in full. So what are you asking me for? Um, well, I'm asking for zero. I'm a single mother uh, with a child, and I'm on disability now, but I'm happy to pay up to 10%. So let's see here. And it took me lots of money to fight him for fraud, because it's five years in court. So you're using this property as a rental property? Yes. And the hardship is that you don't have, currently you don't have an income other than disability, is that what you're telling me? Correct. And I'm a single mom, and he still doesn't pay child support. He never and pays child support. child support, support that you're not getting? No, zero. So this is just, this is a rental license, that's the only issue that was with the property? That was the only issue, sir. Not aware of any prior or subsequent code violations on the property? No, sir. There is no remarkable history whatsoever involved here. We have no reason to dispute any of her testimony. This was matter number five. Does the city have any hard costs that you're aware of here? Uh, no, sir. This was a uh, rental license, purely administrative. All right, I'll reduce it to $3,000 payable within 60 days. Thank you. CE 13080353-1823 Presidential Ray, Unit E 101. Well, the very which is why I started at the back. This is San Marino Boulevard? No, this is 1823. The very first, the very first one. Okay. Go ahead. Case ending at 353, 1823, Presidential Way, Unit E101. Date order 22614, fine started at 32914, ran for 1,844 days. Total is $92,250 a day, date of compliance 416 of 19. Uh, this is a new owner, only mitigating factor is they purchased it with the lien already there. Uh, the original violation was installed a patio without permits. City, city's asking standard 25%.
So the current fine is 92.2, is that right? Yes, sir. And this thing ran for how many days? 1,844. 1844. So years. Yes, sir. All right, can you tell me your names, please? Uh, Emma Reinhardt and Maria Hauper. We purchased the property. Hold on one second. Emma Reinhardt. Reinhardt. And um, you are? Maria Hauper. Maria, and spell your last name for me. H-A-U-P-E-R-T. Hoppert. Yes. Okay. So tell me what you're asking for and why I should grant it to you. Uh, we purchased the property, um, look like uh, the all owner do a lot violations against the city and the condominium. We very difficult to try to find and fit it. We found after bring many companies uh, windows, we found exactly the, um, the windows need to be um, approved by engineers. So you bought it with the lien running? Yeah, and it's, we bring to compliance with a contractor, but no contractor, nobody want to touch it because uh, nobody knows what kind of windows the all owner install. This is the reason he, I, I believe he dropped. Um, after we do a lot of investigation in our own, we found that sticker and we bring the proper engineer and we found that the windows was installed over there and we find a contractor to able to bring everything to compliance and help us to fix it. Um, the truth we, we wanted is you help us to reduce the lien. Well, tell me what you're asking for. Sarah, my sister is living there. She cleaning houses. She don't have too much income. Well, your sister is not asking for the lien reduction. You're asking for the lien reduction. <laughs> because my English is, she has. My English is not too good, sorry. But, uh, but you're the owner of this property, right? Maria Hauper and Emma Reinhardt, yes. You're, you're according, to, according to Papa, they co-own the property. Both, both are on the property. I, I help her to buy, we buy half and half, but she's the one living on the property. Did you know there was a lien running on this property when you bought it? Yeah, we know, but we don't know is so many problems we think we need to only put it the doors, but we don't know all the problem was inside on the unit against the city and the association. What is the city's offer here? Uh, standard 25%. We have no reason to dispute any of their statements. They took six months after purchase to get into compliance. There's no reason to think they didn't have trouble finding a contractor for that amount of time. So the city is offering to reduce it from 92.2 to 23.050, is that it? Yes, sir. We can't pay this amount, I'm so sorry. It's Tell much. me why. You bought the property, right? The property was? Uh... 55, and we buy, and we pay 14,000. We don't have 23,000 to pay. Make me an offer. 5,000. City think the 5,000 is unreasonable under these circumstances? Given the hardship of the circumstances, no. All right, I'll reduce it to 5,000 payable in 60 days. Thank you so Thank much. You. CE 18070100 San Marino Boulevard, Unit 108.
Go ahead. Case ending in 100-4081 San Marino Boulevard, number 108, date ordered 919 of 18. Fine started 1022 of 18, ran for 116 days. Total 23,200, daily fine of $200. Date of compliance, 215 of 19. Uh, same owner, city's asking for standard 25%. Violation was for no rental license. Uh, the only mitigating factor is they claim they didn't receive. We checked notice, verified it was sent to the correct PAPA address at the time. Morning. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Darren Mellinger. I'm an uh, attorney for the property owner, which is House Rent Investment Incorporated. Um, I just want to give you a little bit more background on the procedure. Uh, it's my understanding that the, the notice was posted on September 7th of 2018, uh, regardless of whether it was delivered or not or received or not. The licenses were obtained on September 18th, which is one day before the, uh, looks like the hearing referenced in the uh, December 5th order. So I'm not sure why the um, hearing went on on uh, September 19th with the licenses obta being obtained, but we, uh, we were advised that obviously an inspection had to be scheduled as, as well. That's where the, um, I guess the delay occurred and with all due respect to Mr. Levine, uh, Levine, my apologies, uh, after the fines were obtained, or after the uh, licenses were obtained on September 18th, we, my, our client made uh, numerous attempts to contact Mr. Levine to arrange the inspection. He was on vacation, not available um, until January 7th, in which time I believe it was inspected on the 14th of eventually of January, uh, the subsequent year. And after the inspection, uh, he, re he, again, un unfortunately was maybe some miscommunication, but the fine continued to run until February 15th when pictures were sent of the violation, which was simply a missing screen. So again, with all uh, factors considered, my understanding, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but the fine was, or the, uh, oh my God, the uh, license was obtained on September 18th. Is that correct? I don't have that information. Sir, the only mitigation factor offered is they didn't receive notice. This is all new information. I'd like to pull this from today's agenda. Had they discussed this with us, we would have researched it fully. Perhaps it would make more sense for you to discuss this with the city and see if you can come up with a Sure. With a so compromise. The, the information as far as when the, the uh, license was obtained is not available to you right now? Uh, if I, I don't have a computer up here, I would have to be able to look that up. No, I just in, in front of you right now. No, I don't have the license okay. in front of me. All right. I have the date of compliance, if you could which should match the date the license was issued. But I can't verify that without looking it up in a computer. Um, well, I have the license. And I know nothing about any problems communicating with Officer Levine. Um, first, I'm hearing of it. Okay, no problem. I do have the license and the payment confirmation if you would like me to show it. Why don't, why don't we do this? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay this one right now if you want to have a conversation with the code officer. He's got to present sure. a few more cases. If you feel like you want to come back and still present it today, uh, you can make that argument. If not, if you feel like you want to present it at a future hearing, um, I'll let you do that. But let me, I'm going to pull it now and, and go to another case and give you guys a chance to talk about it. Fine this. would be stayed though, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, there is no fine running. <laughs> there's a lien. Well, the, the further accrual, it's been, it's been cured as of February 15th, so there's no further fees or No, anything. there's, there's no fine running. Sure. Absolutely yeah, correct. correct. Yeah, there's no okay. fine running. In fact, uh, um, you can't even, in fact, ask for a reduction of fine unless they're, the fine, the property is in compliance. Uh, understood. Yeah. I just want to make sure there's yeah. no other fees. No, there's, there's, no okay. there's no fine uh, running. You have a few more, sir? I have a few more, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just wait for you in the back. Okay. CE 10060649 and CE 15080204 801 Ridgewood Drive. Case ending in 204801 Ridgewood. Date ordered 916 of 15. Fine started 927 of 15. Ran for 488 days. Total $12,200. $25 a day. 
Data compliance 127 of 17, same owner. You can go yeah. ahead and do uh, 649 too while we're here. Yes, sir. Case ending in 649, 801 Ridgewood, date ordered 915 of 2010. Fine started 715, 2010, ran for 30 days, total $3,000, $100 a day. Date of compliance 814, 2010. This one is new owner. City's asking for standard 25%. Uh, only mitigating factor is lien was there when purchased. Correction, new owner on both of them. And the only mitigating factor is the lien was there when they uh, purchased the property. Can you gentlemen tell me your names, please? Our investment, this is Imran. I am a Ryan. I'm Aydın Ishbashar. I'm the owner of the property. You're the owner of Arrow Investment Group? Yeah, correct. Correct. Okay, and you, sir, your connection is? Uh, I'm the property manager. I manage the property. We complete the new construction. So I will be the talking and representing my case. Okay, go ahead. So we, we purchased the property in May 2016. As soon as we purchased it, we were going to do demo and rebuild a brand new property. Uh, as soon as we uh, purchased on May 2016, we obtained a permit June 2016 to activate the demo. But the lack of communication between the contractor and us and with the paperwork, it took longer than we expected. So the certification of the code violation did not resolve until the January 2018 or 17. But the property was demo was done on December 22, 2016. So during that time period, we were not able to get the contractor to do final inspection. In the meantime, the owner were kept going back to hospital with the eye issue. So that was kind of lack of communication was happening and we were not able to get the process done. So the, so what you're telling me is that the, the citations for roof repair and nuisance and cleanup and, and that kind of stuff was addressed by the demo and it just wasn't reported to the city or inspected by the city? It was done December 22, but it wasn't able to get to finalize until January, 2000, uh, uh, January 2017 on 27. So a month later. Yes, sir. Date of compliance matches the date it passed the city inspector. This one, is, this was 488 days that this went on? Uh, 488 days total. The, uh, the violation itself predated their ownership. So it wasn't 488 days it took them to get into compliance. It was 488 days out of compliance. When, when did you guys buy this property? May 2016. That's still a long time, right? May to December, right? We apply. Can you, can you, That's we seven months right off the top of my head? Yes. Yeah. We apply for the demo permit, and one month later we got it. Uh, the property, like June, mid June 2016. But it took so long for some reason, with lack of communication with our subcontractors, I believe, to get this uh, permit issued. It took it take like three months, four months. Then uh, our subcontractor was, you know, promising us to clear this, and we have been waiting for him, and nothing happened. And the problem here was, you know, we didn't know that this barric the uh, uh, the there is a violation going on, and. If we know that, definitely we will address the issue, and uh, we just uh, you know lost time during waiting this subcontractor. So uh, this is what happened, you know. So what are you asking me for? Honor, may I? Uh, so our permit was in June 2016, 20, and our first response was from the city 9/17, 2016. And the first lien on the property ending 49, I believe, that $3,000 amount that was reported to us that the bank has paid for it. And it did not come on the title company search. So we find out when we were doing the lien reduction about that $3,000. But we did know there was a certification, there was a violation going on during the, our construction process. But in the meantime, we did receive also another letter saying to clean up the property. We did took action immediately, 
And as of that time, we also thought that was completed as well, too. I work in the area almost eight years, all the code enforcement officer and department. Uh, Ms. Monique William knows me. I have been working with the city of West Palm Beach, entire community, that every property I manage, rent, lease, that we try to bring the property up to compliance and make the city look better. We do also have two more property around the corner, which is brand new. It is on the market for sale. And as a, this subject property is gonna be closing soon with the family we'll be living, and they will maintain the property as it goes. Our goal is to just to make the city look much better than before. And we're just requesting if we can able to reduce the amount to 10%. Sir. Uh, if I understand this correctly, they had trouble with their own title company. They had trouble communicating with their own subcontractors. That's the property owner's responsibility, not the city's. The property was, according to Papa, the property was purchased for $25,000 in May of 2016, and Papa appraises it at $81,000 that year. I think 25, the standard 25% is certainly a fair offer. I don't, may I? <laughs> the construction cost us $275,000, not is an uh, irrelevant uh, case, but uh, since he mentioned uh, how much we purchased, it cost us $270,000. Top of it, there was some details were not done, the contractor that has promised, but we took our action. As he said, or the officer said, yes, this is our responsibility to follow up with the old uh, process, but we did our best, and we've been working with the city of West Palm Beach or like Palm Beach County area, and as soon as we get the property, the first thing that if there's a code violation, we correct them. We don't want to have dirty looking property to be able to rent it or sell it. All right, this is what I'll do. In case CE 10060649, I'll reduce it from $3,000 to $500 payable within 30 days. And CE 1508024, I'll reduce it from $12,200 to $3,000 payable within 60 days. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <coughs> okay, we're going to jump to page three, the bottom one. CE 16060682222 Santa Luisa Drive. Case ending in 682-222 Santa Lucia Drive. Date ordered 817 of 16. Fine started 920 of 16. Ran for 1,015 days. Total $101,500. It was $100 a day. Date of compliance 72 of 19. Same owner. Uh, only mitigating factor given is unaware rental license was needed. Uh, normally asked for standard 25%, but we're looking at a six-figure lien, so wisdom of the magistrate. Go ahead, sir. Yes, good morning, and, and my name is Guillaume de Chalambert. Uh, <clears throat> I am the, the, the owner of this, of this house. This is my primary residence. Um, I purchased the house in 2016 after my divorce. I and have Anna Lucia. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that his name? No. I'm sorry. The owner I have listed here is Anna Lucia, LLC. Yes, yes, I purchased the, the, the property with, uh, with a member of my family in France. So that's why we have uh, we made an LLC. Okay. That. And you're the uh, principal of this LLC, sir? Sorry? You're the owner or principal of this? Uh, yes, exactly, yes. Okay. I'm a part owner and principal of the, uh, I have a, um, uh, yes. So I, I, we, I bought this house after my, my divorce in 2015 and uh, for my primary residence. Um, I had no intention of renting it. In 2016, I, after the, my divorce, I encountered some financial difficulties, so I thought it would be maybe appropriate to, to rent it for a few days. I rented it uh, through Airbnb for uh, 20 days, uh, something like that, in 2016. Um, I had no intention of continuing that. It was very complex to move everything. I have two small children. Um, uh, and I had no idea of that we, I needed to have a rental license. Uh, I do apologize because I received uh, letters uh, asking me to, to, to be in compliance. 
I did not understand. Uh, uh, I thought it was a mistake. I had no idea that I had to do that. Uh, was very new to the to the country, so I do apologize for wasting uh, uh, your time and uh, the time of the, of the service. Um, and uh, I'm asking you to to reduce this a maximum. Uh, I uh, I don't have much money to spend on on uh, on a fine right now. It's not uh, even if I have uh, some time. Uh, it's it's not. Uh, what are you asking me for, sir? Well, again, I, I recognize my mistake and, uh, so, uh, and the time that you're spending. So if you, I would like, I'm okay to, to pay something. If it could be under $1,000, that would be great. Mm. What's the city's position on this case? Uh, well, I said it's six figures. The city does not expect 25% despite it being the standard, but I think one th under 1,000 would be unreasonable. Sir, it's your testimony that you only rented this property for 20 days? Yes, and in 2017, a couple of days or so, but after that, I've never rented the, the property. Does the city have any reason to believe that that's not true? Uh, no, sir. Well, there was a, Why did this thing run there was for a no thousand days? There was no response from him at the time. We cited, as he said, he received the notice and apparently didn't understand it, so he didn't find out what it was about. So with the fine running, we wouldn't go to cite him again for a rental. Uh, when, when the inspector came, uh, he noticed there was a problem on, on the driveway, which I did not know. And I, I, uh, in, in two days, I corrected the problem. So. Uh, again, I apologize for taking your time, and uh, I would have known <laughs> it would get me to this. Uh How did this come into compliance, then? Uh, at this point, it, it's, at this point, we know it's not renting. He, he's not renting, and he lives there. It came into compliance with a non-rental affidavit, but that wasn't until last month. We have no reason to dispute that he only rented it for six days. We just my, my children are going to uh, prove or disprove it either. My children are living with me 70% of the time. They go to school at Sassolive Elementary, but this is my primary residence. I, I, uh. All right, well, what, I, what I'm willing to do in this case is you had 20 days of rental that we yes. know of. Yes. So um, I'll assess the fine for those 20 days, which is $100 a day, so I can reduce the fine to $2,000 <coughs> um, payable within 60 days. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Huh? You're you. very welcome. CE 1507 North Mangonia Drive. Which one? On page two, the top one. Go ahead. Case ending in 275-1372, North Mangonia. Date ordered 8-5 of 15, fine started 9-5 of 15, ran for 1,342 days. At $100 a day, date of compliance 5-9 of 19. Uh, violations were outdoor storage and operative vehicle, overgrowth, trash and debris. Uh, it's the same owner or more aptly the estate of the same owner. Uh, no big giving factor actually given. Um, there were 11 cases under that same owner, and this is the fourth lien reduction application, the first time we could actually get the property cleared up to get it to a hearing. Uh, would that normally be 25% without size of a lien again? Wisdom of the magistrate. Okay, so tell me, uh, tell me what went on here, what you're asking for, and why I should grant it to you. Okay, um, my name is Felicia Moore. I'm the daughter of the late O.C. Moore. Um, these are my brothers. Oscar Moore. Bernard Moore. Um, our father recently passed in um, January of this year. We were unaware of the liens. Um, after we buried him, 
um, we found out about the liens and my brother immediately worked to get the, the um, property up to code so we can try to get the lien reduction. Um, my father was 72 years old, um, was sick. Um, we had no way of even knowing this was on there because if it was, if we would have known, we would have took care of it a long time ago. Um, my, I have pictures where my brother has brought the, the property up to part if you want to see them. No, I believe it's up because they wouldn't have uh, they wouldn't have certified it was in compliance, and you wouldn't okay. be here unless it was in compliance. So no. yeah, um, I mean we're trying to hold on to the property um, because it reminds us of our father, and it's just been a tough time. So we're asking for forgiveness um, because we were unaware of it, and my father was ill. So I don't know if he just forgot about them, or I don't know what happened. So what specifically are you asking me for? We can ask for forgiveness. By forgiveness, you mean you want me to reduce the fine from $134,200 to zero? Yes. I mean, we didn't even know it was a cure in $100 a day. <laughs> um, and then soon, uh, That's a really problem. big ask. <laughs> I know. The thing is, I mean, if we would have knew a little bit earlier, we could have got all this stuff resolved. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm not even in West Palm Beach. I'm from West Palm Beach, but um, once all this stuff started trickling, you know, we were all over the place, exactly. as you can imagine. I believe everything you're telling me, but remember, I have, to, I have to consider the city's interest as well, right? Which is, how long did this thing run? Excuse me, sir. 1,342 on, one days. So 1,000 days this, uh, this property was out of compliance. and. Uh, under the, under the terms that I'm supposed to look at lien reductions, and one of the factors is how long was the property out of compliance. And in this particular case, that weighs badly. But go ahead. You wanted to say something, sir? Um, yes. My dad had a heart failure a couple of years ago, and he was on all type of medications. I don't know if he was aware on how to go about trying to get the lien reduction because he took care of some of the stuff, but he never came down to do the application process. But all fairness, though, like you said, y'all about money. If you don't want to do that, I mean, I can understand since, since his passing and me getting the house up to park, I'll pay that much if, if you can do that. At least 3.5% or 5%. I mean, we're trying to get our life in order. Like, it's so much <coughs> we're trying to get done. Well, yeah. The city would be amenable to 5%. What would that I be? I believe that's what she just stated, right? Like at least 5%. Hold on, let me do some math here. Mm, so 5% is $6,711. I'm willing to reduce it to 6000 even, which is a little less than 5%. Does okay. so that work for you? Yes. Thank you, sir. We we'll appreciate it. All right. $6,000 payable 60 days. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. God bless. You. Okay. Now the, all of the remaining ones are the same owner. Fantastic. <laughs> so, where did we start? That must be that gentleman over there. Yes. Okay. So we will call CE one eight zero four zero two nine five five seven five zero North Flagler Drive. Sir, the rest of these, not including the one that we tabled, are all the same owner. I'd like to do them all together with the exception of 325 Clematis. They're all different properties. They're all different property addresses. Yes, same owner though. We, we can do them separately if the magistrate wants. I, I'm not gonna argue the point. I'm just making the request. How do you feel about doing them together or separately? Um, whatever you like. All, all, all of them are, I believe, under 10,000, and all of them have basically the same arguments. All right, let's, uh, let's try together. If it's not working, we'll separate it out. Which one did you not want called? <coughs> Which address? With the exception of 325, yes. Can we do 325 first? Sure. I'm okay, okay. with that. All right. Let me get to that. 325 Clematis Street. That's page four, third one down. Yeah, I got it. Okay. C 
CE 17080084325 Clematis Street. Case ending in 084-325 Clematis Street, date ordered 920 of 17, fine started 1021 of 17. Uh, number of days 454, total is 45,400, $100 a day, date of compliance 118 of 19. Uh, it's the, the same owner. Um, the crux of their mitigating factor is uh, they, they claim it had been complied. The sole violation was for and not having an attractive window display, which is the code on, uh, for Clematis Street. Um, okay, let me show you the first picture was at the time of the case. I take it the city did not like that. Well, that's not any window display whatsoever. Now, <coughs> when they fixed up the, the, the property, it, it's, it's a, it's a two-sided property, double window storefront. One side, as you can't see in that picture, one side is boarded. Okay, one side was boarded. Their contention is the officer wouldn't comply the case because it was still boarded, even though they weren't cited for, for boarding on the property. But they were cited for an unattractive window display, and boarding a window is certainly an unattractive window display. So until they put a window in and put an, unattract put an attractive window display in it, they were not in compliance as the city's contention. Uh, city's asking for 25%. The floor is yours, sir. Uh, Alberto Urechica, I'm the property manager. So uh, John Murphy, when I met with him at the property, he told me about the decorative window display. And uh, I told him that we were going to be doing construction at the property. And he said, work on your property. I'm sorry, your name was? Alberto Urechiga. Can you spell that for me? U-R-R-E-C-H-A-G-A. -R -R OK. And you're the property manager, sir? Correct. All right, go ahead. So, so, so you met with the, the officer, and he told you what? It was a decorative window display. I met with him, Anna Aponte, to see what would they, what would they consider as being proper for clematis so we did different things and finally they agreed that it was nice display when i called john murphy to come to the property he realized that there was plywood on the other side because it's a construction site and he's like oh i didn't know about this this wood here and i said i said i understand sir it's taken me a while with anna ponte to work on this process to get it approved i said can you close out my violation for the decorative window display because they're both two different building codes. One is for display, and one is for not allowing to have board on, the, on a construction site. I mean, you're allowed to have board, but only for six months. So I said, please close this out and open me Sir, a new if I can correct that, no boarding is allowed on Clematis Street. I understand that, but you can actually get a boarding permit. The code changed after, but before there was, you were allowed to have a boarding permit. So I said, Mr. Murphy, can you please close out the decorative window display, which I did that. If you look at the pictures, I put some decorative stuff that they said would be fine. Can you put it on the pictures? You can see we put that up there. So it had something and not a like white, so, and they said that it would be fine. He said, you have to take the boards down. I said, okay, give me a new violation for plywood on windows, which is a different building code, he said, absolutely not. We came to a hearing, he gave me 90 days. If you look, if you go to the, I have pictures and everything, I, I went to the building department before he issued the violation on 7-19-2017 to finish the permit for the construction. I didn't get the permit in hand until 8 of 2008, no, Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Give me before, one second. You, before you go too much further, I mean, here's, I, I, I don't honestly know whether or not I would have ruled as the magistrate that the boarding constituted a, a violation under this particular code section. But with that said, that, that's not the issue here today. Mm -hmm. the, whoever was the magistrate at that time made the ruling and gave you time to correct. And, and then, certif and then a second magistrate or even the same magistrate apparently certified that they did not believe you were in compliance. I can't revisit those orders. I don't have the authority to revisit those orders. No, I, I understand that. But, but when we went to the first hearing, <coughs> the, the, 
the extension or the 90 days was to get the approval of that silly thing that I put in the window, the, the cartoonish. I had him come out, if you pull up the inspections, I had him come to the property multiple times to show him and make sure that he was okay with it with Anna Ponte. He said, no, now you have to do the construction. And I told, like, take off the plywood, which was not part of the decorative window display. It's two different building codes. And I said, can you please close that one out and open me a new one? I'm working on the permit. It took a year to get the permit. If you look, I submitted it 7, 19, 2017, nine days before he actually even issued the, the violation because he called me and told me what I had to do. You know, and I said, well, it's a construction site. We're going to do this, you know, and he's like, no, but I need the decorative window display. So I complied. I didn't get the permit. And this is very important because it took a year to get the permit. So 365 days in the city, I had to meet all the different plan reviewers. I had to sit down with Steve Kennedy finally at the end to get the permit all day, going back and forth with all the different permits after a year. Let's roll back here for a second. So when the officer asked you to remove the boarding because he did not believe that complied with the, the code section that you were, <coughs> you, were, you were alleged to have violated, you did not remove the file. We can't. There's nothing behind it. We can't. I t and then I have an email from John Murphy here that says, can I come up? You have to show it to the okay. code supervisor first. After I met with him and I complied because I had 90 days, this was in December of 2017, I said, John, I said, once we start, because he said, oh, take off the plywood. He says, once I can see that you're working there, we'll stop the fines. I couldn't work because I'm not going to do illegal construction at the property without a permit. If you look, it took a year to get the permit. And then the, the glass the, for, the, for the permit is 16 weeks out. So I pulled a different permit to get, I have the permit here. Let me bring this up so you can see also. I had to pull another permit separate to the, to the renovation because I didn't have time to wait for the impact because it was accruing $100 a day. I nonstop, I have hundreds and hundreds of emails with everybody with the city doing everything to comply. So let me see if I understand you correctly. So this email from Officer Murphy says that they will stop the fines once either the glass is replaced and film is applied or they'll stop the daily fines when work is actually being done on the storefront. And so your argument is, is that it took you a year to get the permits to do the work, right? hundred, more than a year. Okay. A year to get the original permit for the whole renovation of 325 Clematis. Once I got that and it was approved, then I can send the windows to production. It took 18 weeks. So how, long, how long were these windows boarded? Um, 2000, I think it was um, the, uh, February of 2017. Sir, if I can make one point. Mm -hmm. The code for attractive windows display actually specifies even during construction. The only exception would be when they're working on the storefront itself because that's what they're working on. But, but the, the problem that we're arguing is the code for plywood on the windows is different than the code for decorative window display. And I told John Murphy, and he acknowledged it, and he says, I'm not closing it. Well, I, I mean, it's probably beyond the scope here since I'm supposed to, you know, I'm. I'm supposed to just be dealing with mitigating factors with, uh, with reduction of fine, but it seems to me not an unreasonable reading of the uh, attractive display ordinance to, to recognize that boarding a window is not in compliance with that. Now, it doesn't really matter what I think about that. It only matters what the previous magistrate does. But So it, the question I have for you is what are you asking me for here? I'm looking for a 1%, uh, I'm willing to pay 1%, and that's still more than what we want to pay, not because we did everything to comply, everything in the time frame. I ordered $55,000 windows from Saturno Glass, and it was 18 weeks out. Then I had to pay, so I ordered those. I paid another $12,500 for regular storefront glass, which is going to be demolished and thrown away. I paid $17,200 to, 
to get the permit for the, the, the first permit that took a year to do. So financially, we've just been dishing money, fixing the buildings, doing everything to comply. I, I, I'm not trying to be cheap. I'm just saying this is 44,000. I think 1% is very fair considering that I, I have more permits that I had to pull. If you look at how long the, the other permit took, uh, two months to get it out of the city. So 365 days plus two months for the other permit, and then it took another eight weeks to do the glass from Soterno Glass, which that's the fastest. I did everything perfectly on time. And if you look, I have a picture, I have pictures on my phone. I applied for the permit to, to do the renovation of the whole building before I even got the violation. And I complied in January, and we're here, what is it now? Seven months later, because how many violations do we have to take care of, Mitch? So many, because they started going to all the different properties that we right. had, and me, we've uh, been going back and forth trying to get this done. Right. Let me let the city have the last word here. Um, <clears throat> he, he's correct. I mean, well, we had the other eight liens, but I mean, that just speaks to the fact that these properties have to be in compliance really all the time, not just when they're asking the city to pay less money to the city. I agree. Again, I agree. We're, we're, we're asking standard 25%. We're not making any special arguments here if you look at the time if you look at the time all we did was work diligently with the city back and forth i can show you all the screenshots <laughs> I, I i believe you. the city's offering 25 percent a 75 percent reduction you don't think that's fair you want a one percent you want to I, reduce to 1%. i think it should be zero but i'm willing to do one percent because we were diligent, and I understand that there's time that people had to come out. The key question is, what am I willing to do? And I'm willing to do 10%. So I'll reduce it to $4,500 payable within 60 days. Okay, we're calling all the other ones? Yep. All right. Uh, 10%, $4,500. 60 days? 60 days. Thank you. Okay. CE 1804029557050 North Flagler Drive. CE 1801036912 South Dixie Highway. CE 1801044 Florida Avenue. CE 1808015653 Clematis Street. CE 1709021654 Clematis Street. CE 1707023953 Clematis Street. CE 1801041052525 Datura Street. And CE 1801045253131 Datura Street. All right, so why, why do I want to hear all these together? Uh, all the arguments are the same. It's the same owner, and they're all under 10000 All right, so tell me what's going on here. Hmm. Do you want all the property information or just... No, just give me the... the uh, all, all of them are you same know what, owner. Actually, I'm sorry? Tell me what's going on here. Okay, I think we need to address each one individually or as a whole, I can explain. So if you give me the address, I'll tell you what happened with each one. Well, tell me what you're asking me to do, and let's see where we are before we get into it. Uh... I want to be at 1%, and let me explain why. 120 South Dixie, the, vi the, co the code enforcement officer went out there, identified whatever needs to be done. I did it all. Then he said there was a bunch of illegal construction. I had to go, after researching back and forth, breaking walls, going inside the building, I had to go to microfilm. And all that illegal construction that he said was done was permitted in 1990. And I had to do all the legwork. So, he, I mean, if you look at... All right, it seems to me we're going to have to do these one at a time. So let's start with the first one. Okay. Case ending in 295-5750 North Flagler. Date ordered 523-18. Fine started 622 of 18. 24 days, 2400 hours. 100 hours a day. Date of compliance 716 of 18. Uh, same owner, city's asking for standard 25%. So tell me what happened on uh, 5750 North Flagler Drive, sir. Um, I believe that that's the one with the fence and the vagrants that live there. They kept breaking it down, and we'd fix the fence. Breaking it, they fixed the fence. 
So it was constant back and forth that we would comply and we'd call the inspector, he'd fail it, we'd comply, because they would they jump the fence at night, they break the fence coming in. That place is filled with homeless people. It's a constant problem. And it's not something that we haven't complied. It's you know, the, the city's not, I don't know, I, I have no idea how to do it. And how long did this go on for? I think you said 27 days. Okay, I, I wasn't sure if you're talking about the case or the We have all our inspection for this. All our properties have maintenance agreements. Uh, they even, we trim, they wanted us to trim the trees, which we did. And actually when we trimmed the trees, the city, uh, I guess the landscaping for the city saw our guys and they were like, oh, you need to do the, the, your work like theirs because we trimmed all the palm trees like hurricane trim, like absolutely like above and beyond what normally somebody would have to do. Okay, so let me understand this one. So there were violations on the property due to vagrancy. Your argument is, is that you did the best you could and the city's argument is it took 24 days to come into compliance. Am I clear on both sides' argument? If I can no, we, com we complied. It's just that we would comply and then they would keep coming back and, and, and breaking the stuff and then they, they wanted more and they wanted more and, and finally it eventually stopped. How severe was the, the condition of the property? Does this, I mean, do you have that in your record? The, the, the fence issue itself was not severe. The um, volume of complaints on this, in this particular case was quite large. Uh, so there was definitely community interest. And then in somehow after 24 days, the vagrants stopped coming or, or you did something different, sir? No, we put tar all over. I mean, we put um, uh, petroleum jelly all over. I mean, we had to think of uh, different tactics to keep the people from going. We even hired a security guard to come there until the inspection would pass to make sure that they wouldn't uh, break the fence more because they all want to go into that park. Okay. Sir? Yeah. Okay. Uh, bottom line, which is why I wanted to put all these together, act plus to save time. Um, bottom line, we're talking about nine liens alone before us from the same owner today, and it, it, it basically seems the city's in the position of doing the property management for them, which we're not supposed to be. Uh, so we don't consider 25% unreasonable. A 1%, I think, is not only unreasonable, is an insult to all other property owners that come for lien reductions. I, I think this property 10% would be fair. I, I don't think I cut him off while he was speaking. I'm sorry. Um, I, I think 1% would be an insult to all other property owners coming before us and walking away paying more than that uh, in itself. All right, anything further from either side? All right, I'll reduce this to $600 payable within 30 days. Thank you. Next one. Next one is 530 Clematis Street, CE 1707-0239. Where is this one? At the bottom? The second one down. Second one. Got it. There are two for this property in itself. Do we want to do those separately also? Yes. Okay. 530 Clematis Street, uh, case ending in 239, date ordered 96 of 17, fine started 10 7 of 17, ran for 61 days, total $6,100, $100 a day, date of compliance 12 7 of 17, uh, same owner, city's asking for 25%. And like most of these cases, they actually gave no mitigating factors whatsoever. So what's the other one on 530 Clematis Street? CE 18080156. Case ending 156, 530 Clematis Street, date order 103 of 18. Fine started 131 of 19, ran for 29 days. $5,800, $200 a day, date of compliance 31 of 19. Same owner, no mitigating factors given. And the city's asking for 25? On Percent. both, yes, sir. On both. All right, floor is yours. So <clears throat> this space, we actually have it. Um, I think this was for the decorative <coughs> window display, correct? And then there was also for maintenance of the building, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So we actually have a business tax receipt for this space. So by the, yes. By the code, we're not, it's, it's considered as an occupied unit, so it doesn't require to have decorative window display. However, we still have the decorative window display. However, there's been confusion of what the city considers as decorative, and then there was also a, 
a door when we did the demolition of the building next door, that there was a door that was left as a, a passage. And we had to, when we did the demolition, we got the permit, there was never a problem. And then I had to pull a separate permit to, to close that door off. So I had to, it, you know, it, take, it took more than a month for the city to approve the permit and then to seal that, that door up. Everything else, the little graffiti that was on the thing and the decorative window display and, and buffing out the, the glass. If you go up and down Clematis and you go to any of our properties, our properties look better than anybody else. Not because the city's monitoring us, it's just that we were, I don't know, we, we, they got a list of all our properties and they said go to all our properties because if you look at all these code enforcement cases, they the all only time the that has time. ever occurred, apologize for cutting them off, but the only time that has ever occurred was for the lien reduction process where we have to go to all these properties. At no time did anybody pass around a list targeting these properties. I don't even want to go there. Um, the, how long were each of these uh, violations out of compliance? First one was 29 days, the second one 61 days. The 61 days required me to, to pull permits with the city. The other ones I complied. Every time, if you, look at my, if you look at his inspections, I called my inspections on time, and then he would identify more things. Oh, but do this, but do this. And I say, I'm following your list of what's on the report that says do this, this, and this to comply, and he would pick more stuff out. It wasn't like I, I, didn't, I waited 21 days to call inspection. You can pull up every single one and you'll see John Murphy or whoever inspected, denied. Inspected, denied. Because he kept pulling more things for me to do. I normally would use what they have on their inspection sheet and say, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to follow exactly that and we comply. I'm requesting 10% because I made effort. I can show you the permits. I have them here that I had to pull and it had nothing to do with the, the code enforcement case. So you're requesting 10 in the city, what is the city requesting, 25? Standard 25. All right, in CE 17070239, I'll reduce from 6100 to $1,500 payable within 60 days. In case CE 18080156, I'll reduce that to $1,500 payable within 60 days. Next. Next one. CE 17090216540 Clematis. And that's page four at the bottom. I got it. Go ahead. Case ending in 216540 Clematis Street, date order 126 of 17, fine started 25 of 18. Ran for 44 days, total $4,400, $100 a day. Date of compliance 321 of 18, same owner. City's asking for standard 25%. Go ahead, sir. It took two months. I had to do the paving, the striping, and the ceiling of the property, plus put all new hedges. The permit took two months to get the permit. If you look at, if you look at the property, it, uh, and that's the one also, just so you can see, the dumpster, can you, can you give me the details exactly of this violation? Uh, well, the main dispute was the, the dumpster enclosure. Okay, let me, go, let me go to the dumpster enclosure. That dumpster enclosure was put by the city when there was, um, there was a fence along the back that they did for the, what is that, swings? We let them use our vacant lot for the swings, and they put up a fence. And then years later, they come to us and say, we put up a fence and a dumpster enclosure illegally. We never put that up. That was the DDA that we gave them permission to the lot. And then we even had a mural there that they gave me a violation for that the DDA allowed to do. So since we gave the property to the DDA to use that for the swing skate because they didn't want people coming in. They wanted to create a, a controlled environment. And when they finished their swing, their swing stage, they left the fence there. Well, what is the DMEA? The DDA. Uh, the Downtown, Downtown Design Development Authority, uh, maybe? Development Authority. We let them use our law. And even just, and they also put lights to light up that whole area. And I had, they never took them down after their, their display, and I had to pull a demolition permit for the lights that they installed themselves. So uh, we give them the property, like, hey, we're gonna help out the community, and then years later, we get violations for what they left behind. You can pull up that there was a permit for the lighting that we had. That fence is all gone, we demolished it. I had to pull a demolition permit for something that we didn't even do. 
I'm sorry, a demolition permit to remove a fence? Yes. I've never seen that before. If you, we went in there multiple times and we tried to legalize it even with... Well, um, wait, what did you end up doing with the dumpster? The dumpsters are wrapped around the building. It's behind the building because that's the only way that we can comply because they didn't want us to put the fence because it was on a different property line. I mean, it was constant battle trying to get compliance. It's not like we didn't do everything that we needed to do. What are you asking for in this one? Uh, City's so asking standard 25%. What are you asking for, sir? 10% is very fair considering that this is not something that... Yeah, there was a couple little things that we needed to do, but we did it in time. But some, even, um, what's this guy's name with the DDA, he had to get involved to try to close it out, and he couldn't. So I just demolished the fence completely and moved the dumpster around the other building. Maybe it'll help. The city's amenable to 10%. The city's agreeable to 10%? Yes, sir. All right, uh, $440 payable, 30 days. Thank you. Next. Next is <coughs> CE 18010369120 South Dixie Highway. Go ahead. Case ending at 369120 South Dixie. Fine started 6 6 of 18, ran for 33 days, total $3,300. Hundred dollar a day fine, data compliance seven nine of eighteen, same owner. Again, no mitigation information given, but I'm sure we're going to hear that now. I bet we will. Go ahead, sir. So this was the the code enforcement officer. This is the old fire station. It's a historical building. So he said that we did a bunch of illegal construction. Instead of doing his due diligence, he just violated me. And it took a month, 21 days for me to get the, the, the stuff from microfilm over here. And I had to research maybe 300 pages of permits from the 90s just to find. And once I showed him that, that, that everything was legal and the permits were pulled in the 90s, he closed out the case. Because I did everything that I needed to do I mean, within a week. It's just that I couldn't get him to comply. I told him that these were old permits, and he wouldn't do the, the due diligence, and he said that the, the due diligence of finding permits was my responsibility, so I had to do all these things. Uh, which well, well, putting the permits aside for a second, there's, mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of other violations under this code section, including an electrical conduit is falling off the building, peeling and faded paint. That, that has nothing to do. Even if, yeah, those even, if I, even if I grant you the 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 permit issue. Those things were, were handled in a, in a week. That was, I, I sent my maintenance guys to tighten up and paint whatever needed to be done. But the, the thing that held me back was researching the permits that he said all was illegal. He said all the windows were illegal construction, that we closed up uh, concrete. And I showed him. I took him inside the building and I opened up walls to show him. And he just, I, that's why I had to keep going back and forth to get microfilm. And then he complied it. Do you have any information on this at all? Well, I went to hearing on 3-7 of 18, and I mean, in the case itself, in June of that year, it still required paint. So that, there's no permit issue involved in paint. No, no, no. The, the, we complied with everything that we needed to do within a week, because I put my guys there immediately. This is little Mickey Mouse work that needs to be done. As soon as we complied, I called them over and I said, hey, look, I opened up walls and I showed them that it was concrete behind and it was old concrete. And he said, no, he says, I need permit. So I went into the city's, the, the, the one stop shop thing. I couldn't find any permits. Then I had to go into microfilm. It took 21 days to get the microfilm back. I had to go page by page by page finding it. And then he saw, because even my tenant, Layla, said he went to, to what's his name, to um, John Murphy and said, this, he's been there for 14 years and this was done before him. And then once I showed him the proof that it was, in, that it was all 1990 permitted work, he closed it out right there. So I had to wait to get the microfilm from the city to show him, you know, because he didn't do his due diligence before he sentenced the, the violation. He just assumed that it was illegal construction. Again, I'm looking at June 7 of 18th, paint and exterior repairs not complied, all other violations complied. That says of June 7th of 2018, and it wasn't complied till a month later. So he's not even looking, he's not even referencing permits anymore as of June of that year. 
I'm, t I'm telling you, I walked the building every time with John Murphy. Well, I got to go with the record evidence. The record evidence is that the, the issue that was holding him up was not the permits, but it was the painting. It, it was the permits. I, I understand what he, whatever his he... His affidavit of files doesn't, doesn't call on the permits. His affidavit of file calls on the, the painting and the... The paint and the exterior repairs. So I, even if I grant you the building permit issue, which I'm granting you right now, the, comply, the, the officer didn't comply you on paint and repairs. As of what date? 6, 7 of 18. And what was the violation issued? One twenty two eighteen. Okay. Correction, when did, 1, when did the fine start accruing? Oh, I have that here. 6, 6 of 18. Okay, so 6-6, six, six. and then the next day, I felt like I had complied, and I said, hey, John Murphy, come out here, and maybe he gave me a couple more, oh, do this, do this, but if you see, if he gave me till 6-6, six, six, and I called for inspection 6-7, I felt best, based on our first walkthrough, that I was good to go. So it's a day later, it's not like, if you see, we're actively doing that. I'm asking for 10%. The 6-6 the six, six was the magistrate's date, so 6-7 was the... Uh the mandatory reinspection, and that's when he said it wasn't painted yet and the exterior repairs weren't done yet. 7 9 of 18, this <coughs> reinspection passed, all violations. But he wants comply. 25, you want 10, is that it? Yes, sir. I'll reduce it to $800, payable 30 days. I'm, so, I'm sorry, how many days? 30. How many more of these we got? Three. C E one eight zero one zero four one zero five two five Detura Street. I'm sorry, was that five twenty five Detura? Yeah. Okay. Case ending at four one zero five twenty five Detura. Date order three twenty one eighteen. Fine started seven twenty eighteen. Ran for twenty eight days. Twenty eight hundred dollars. Hundred dollars a day. Date of compliance eight seventeen of eighteen. Same owner. No mitigation information given. Can you, You're up again. Can, can you state the violation? There's like 12 of them here. 10 of them. Trash in degree, permanent for awning, windows and doors, mural permit, resurface parking lot, paint, exterior repairs, maintain landscape, and electrical equipment. Yours. Okay, so th this one, there was an awning that was missing. I went to the city. I applied for the permit. I had the permit within 15 days. We put the awning. We closed that inspection. Everything else um, we had closed off. He also said there was a legal construction on the building that we had sealed up windows along the side. I had to go to microfilm and do all the work that, and, and research making sure because we had already had the issue at 120 South Dixie. So we pulled microfilm also. We showed him that this was all legal construction. I had to get FPL involved because there's only like a one and a half foot gap between a barbed wire, wire cha chain link fence and our building. And I said to John Murphy that I thought it was unreasonable, especially since nobody can see it, for, for us to have a, somebody go in between a building that has a foot and a half gap, two feet, for them to paint the building. It made no sense. However, we still did it, and the only delay we had was with the permit and microfilm. But we complied with everything. We, we pulled permits. We even did more than that. You'll see later on when we get to the next, per, the next one for f 540 Clematis. I mean, right, 540 Detroit. So I'm willing to pay 10%, not because uh, I just, I was doing everything in compliance. I know it takes people's time and, you know, the city needs to make their money. I understand. But we did everything that we needed to do in a timely, in a timely fashion. This is never about the city making their money. I'm sorry? Yeah, let's not even go there. What's the city asking? The city's asking 25%. Date of compliance, I'm sorry. The magistrate's order had the fine starting 720 of 18 if not complied. As of 724 of 18, he's got... Paint remains not complied, 18105J, all other violations complied. 
So I understand what he's saying about the permits, but when the fine started, it was no longer an the, issue. The, the, paint, the paint that I could not comply in that time frame is because nobody would get, you have to, the whole wall, if you look at, can you put the picture of the building, please? So you can see, <coughs> right, if you go back to that wall right there, nobody can see that. You can't see from the expressway or if, can you show me the gap, Monique, between the, the, the fence? So you can see, you see how close the FPL, this is the FPL plant. It is super dangerous to be in that area. It's bob wire. Nobody wanted to do that. I had to hire a contractor, pay three times the cost just to get in there. To, and you see all those windows? He said that that was all illegal construction. I had to do microfilm to show him that that was old stuff. It wasn't something that we did. So 10% right. I think is very fair, considering it wasn't, that we weren't complying. I'll reduce it to $700 payable 30 days. Next one. CE 18010452531 Deterra Street. <coughs> Case ending in 452531 Deterra. Date order 321.18, fine started 7 2018, 67 days. Total of $6,700, $100 a day. Date of compliance 925.18. Same owner, no mitigation given. This is 531 day tour. Yeah. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Um, this is 531, which is also together with um, Florida Avenue. It's a vacant lot. It's a parking lot. So it took two months to get the permit for the asphalt striping and ceiling. Um, and then there was other things that needed to be done to the building. They wanted us to put irrigation they wanted us to which there was already irrigation but we had to fix everything put planting and we did all those very quickly the only thing that took time was getting the inspections and the paving completed um, I actually have let me see I should have the permit information I mean if you if, if you look it up or I can give it to you we we took Tell care me. we took care of it quickly when you have the permits in the city, it's not as fast as it got, the, the plans got denied twice. So it, it, two months is really, it, it went into the time. If we didn't pull permits, we would have done it very quickly. I think 10% would be very fair because we did, you know, we were, as soon as I get the violation, I put it into action. It's just I can't control the city and getting the, the plans approved faster. Sir, that's why we notice hearings and property managers and owners can show up at these hearings and say how much time they need. Well, sometimes the times it's granted is not sufficient time, just like in, as in the other one where it took a year to get a permit. And they only gave us, I think it was 60 days. So, I mean, if you What's look this, at this one is what, 60, you have seven? people that come in here and they have a thousand days of non-compliance. This is 27, you know, 6,700. I'll reduce it to $1,500 payable 60 days. Last one. CE 18010454 Florida Avenue. Case ending in 454, uh, lot on Florida Avenue, date order 321.18, fine started 7 1918, 68 days, $6,800, $100 a day, compliance date 925.18, same owner, no mitigation given. This is the same parking lot. This is 11022. I'm sorry, this is Florida Avenue. Florida Avenue. So this is the it's part of the same parking lot that was, it was connected with the other, because it's half and half. 531 and Florida Avenue is a parking lot. So it's the same parcel, but it's... It's, it's two, two different, different parcels. Just two different one parcels? Yeah. That are attached to each other? Yes, sir. Okay, so what happened here? The same thing. I mean, we, we had to put them both into compliance at the same time because of the permit. There's no difference between this and the last case. This fine is $100 more. I think it probably took one more day, you know, because the inspections, sometimes you can't do them. I don't know if he came the next day or something or didn't put it into the computer. I'll reduce it the same way. 6,800 to 1,500 payable 60 days. Is that it? That's it. Thanks for coming in. I don't have any copies of orders. It's okay. We'll, I can, we'll mail I can pay it online, right? 
Thank you so much, everybody. I guess we can start on the regular matters until they finish talking. Do we want to do this one yet? No. All right, okay. Obviously, that's true. All right, where are we? It's been a long morning. Where's Alex? <laughs> Is Officer Lopez in the house? We can go to the next one. No, he's, he's got, got 19 more. and 20. Yeah, he's got a couple. I'll go to Cassandra. Yeah, go, go ahead. 22. All right. Number 22, CE 19050216805 North Olive Avenue. Sanchez and Hilaire, code enforcement for the city of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on May 21st of 2019. Certified mail was signed for on May 23rd. In addition, the property and city hall were posted May 30th. The property was cited for 9442B25 and 9442B22. I've had no contact with the owner. They have complied with 9442B.2-2. Um, at this time, the city is asking for an additional 10 days or $50 per day until compliance is achieved. So the city's concern is this sign right here that says now leasing apartments? Yeah, um, they have it in the sidewalk. Talked to them several times about moving it. They still refuse to move it. So the problem is the location? Well, the, yeah, and they can't have it in either way. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that's permittable. It's prohibited, yeah. yeah. Unless the code changed from the last time I read it, which does happen from time to time. So you spoke to them about it and they I'm said not, what? I've, I've huh? spoken to them um, before about it, but not for this actual case. Okay, and notice was done by certified mail and posting? Yes. And they didn't respond in any way, as no. far as you know? They just removed the uh, banner. Well, one out of two ain't bad, but not good enough. Uh, KCE 19050216, make the following findings of fact on life. I know this is sufficient. Find the property is in violation of 94402B2-5. I give it 10 days to comply. What fine were you asking for? 50. Or a fine of up to $50 per day. I'm sorry, a fine of $50 per day may issue. Yes. Number 23, CE 19050239, 1312-11th Street. <coughs> this is Andrew St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was signed on May 10th. Certified mail was signed for on May 13th. In addition, the property and City Hall were posted May 29th. This property was cited for a rental license violation, clean and sanitary, certificate of use, garbage can placement, and outdoor storage. I've had no contact with the owner, but the property has complied with the garbage can placement, the outdoor storage, and the clean and sanitary. Um, at this time, the city is asking for additional 30 days for the rental license and certificate of use, or $200 per day until compliance is achieved. So how do we know this property is being rented? I mean, I've seen cars there, people coming in and out of it. Um, so there, there are people living in there that are not the owner? Yes. 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 Okay. And the clean and sanitary issue is what? Oh, that's complied. Oh, that's complied. Yeah. Okay. Garbage can. Complied and outdoor complied. storage. Outdoor storage complied. Yes, sir. All right. So it's just the rental license the issue. CLU. Okay. All right. CE one nine zero five zero two three nine. Make the following findings of fact and life. I notice sufficient found the property in violation of eighteen one sixty two a and twenty two thirty two a. Respondents thirty days to come to compliance or a fine of two hundred dollars per day may issue. 24 CE 19050586 Handy Avenue. I'm um, Cassandra St. Hilaire, code enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on May 30th. Certified mail was sent out on May 31st. In addition, the property and City Hall were posted June 6th. This property was cited for clean and sanitary, um, failure to comply, garbage litter and refuse, and clean up to the center of the right of way, the easement. I've had contact with the property owner. Um, I know the issue was trying to get FPL to cut back. Um, their lines, um, the tree that was encroaching into their lines. Um, so at this time, the city is asking for additional 10 days or an abatement or abate. Are all these code sections still at issue? Yes. 
Tell me about this tree issue. What's the, the, the tree is infringing on the power lines? Uh, yeah, um, when she called me, um, the young lady, I guess, that manages this property, um, she told me that she was trying, um, she got in contact with FPNL and within like a week or two, and this was back, I believe like in June, her and I spoke, um, that FPL was supposed to come out there and trim the tree, which I believe they did, and she was supposed to go out and uh, after they trimmed the tree from that was encroaching into the line, she was supposed to go in the rear and have her. Okay, so the FPL line thing is not an issue. It's anymore. not an issue okay. anymore. So this is why we're only asking for ten days, or the bait or abate. <coughs> Tell me about uh, why why the city wants to abate here. Um, with the complaints that we've been getting with the neighborhood, especially, I don't know if you can see the pink house right there, um, they've had raccoons, snakes, and everything coming from that property. So, so we do believe is, that is hazardous to the community. the overgrowth is significant enough that it's becoming uh, habitat for vermin? Yes, I do. And a potential fire hazard because of the density? Yes. Okay. Have you had any conversations with the owner on this property? I've oh, yeah, you just said yeah, you did. I you did. talked to her on the phone. Has she indicated that she wants to clean this up? Or? She did indicate that, but like I said, um, they're just maintaining only the front of the property. They're not maintaining Holy the smokes, rear. Holy that's like a forest. Yes. There, you can't get anything back there at all. That is not being cut, and it's, you know, unfortunate for the neighbors. How long would it take for that? Holy smokes, that's a lot of That's a lot of growth. contractors, they'll do it. <laughs> they don't have any problems going back there and cleaning it. All right. Um, well, I'm satisfied that that is a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. Showing KCE 190505 I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 18106A and 18215B and 744A3 and 74C5. I give the respondent 10 days to bring the property into compliance. I take further notice that the condition of the property constitutes a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. If they do not comply within 10 days, I hereby authorize the city to enter the property and abate any and all violations. I hereby charge the cost of said abatement against the property and property owner. Thank you. Number 25, CE 1906 0019 210 Sunset Roads rescheduled. Number 26, CE 1906 0036 Street. Christine Anderson, Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on June 4th of 2019. Certified mail was sent on June 5th. In addition, the property and City Hall were posted on June 6th. This property was cited for um, the prohibited trees, the Australian pine, um, clean sanitary, failure to, compi fa failure to comply, and trees and hedges obstructing the right of way. I've had no contact with the owner. At this time, the city is asking for additional five days or abate. So what do we got here? We got prohibited trees. Yes, and um, the, the city would like to abate this um, because the Australian pine is an invasive tree. And as you can see, it's, um, the roots are actually coming into the road and messing up. So they're pulling the road up and potentially yeah. creating a potential road hazard for drivers yes, and, sir. and pedestrians. Yeah. Also blocking the sidewalk, it looks like. Yep. That Australian pine is a prohibited tree under yes. the code? Yeah. What's the clean and sanitary here? Oh, it's just with the code, with the overgrowth and the trash, like having to clean it up. Okay. Around it, trimming it. And that's it, it's in the, the public right away? Yeah. The roots in the Have you had any contact the with the property owner here? No one has contacted me. Is anyone living there? No, it's a, it's a vacant lot. It's a vacant lot. And this is actually a, um, a neighborhood complaint, too. Several people have called in reference to just that property. I can see why they would. <laughs> so you posted the property and you sent certified mail to the yeah. address of the owner and the property appraisal records? Yes. And nobody contacted you? Nope. All right. In case CE 1906-0036, make the following findings of fact and life I notice is sufficient. I found the property in violation of 94444-4I, 18106-A, 18215-B, and 74-4-C-4. Make further finding that the condition of the property constitutes a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the City of West Palm Beach, or the respondent to bring the property into compliance within five days. In the absence of compliance, I hereby authorize the City to enter the property and abate any and all violations. I hereby assess the cost of said abatement against the property and property owner. Thank you. Number 19, CE 19050398372, Alhambra Place.
I heard, I've heard. Well, I'm back. All right, good afternoon, Special Magistrate Alex Lopez with the City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, property located at 372 Alhambra Place. It is a residential property that was cited for failure to secure permits for an installation of a fence and driveway. Required passing inspections and closure of permits and for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. Your Honor, the property was cited on May 20th, 2019. The notice was mailed first class and certified mail and the property was also posted on June 7th, 2019. Special Magistrate, to date, all code sections have complied with the exception of section 110.1 regarding the passing inspections and closure of permits. There has been contact at the residence and from the property owner, and for this, the city recommends 60 days to comply or be subject to a $50 a day fine thereafter to which the owner has agreed to. So you're representing to me that the owner has conceded that they're in violation of 110.1 and they're agreeable to 60 days and then $50 a day afterward? That is correct. Well, far be it me to interfere with an agreement. CE 1905398, make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I find property in violation of 110.1. Or the respondent to come into compliance within 60 days or fine of $50 per day, Mayor Number 20, CE 1906053400, 500 El Prado. Alex Lopez with the City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, property located at 500 El Prado, is a residential property that was cited for trash and debris within the property, missing grass, the hanging of garments and linen on fencing and shrubs, lack of landscape maintenance, uh, trash and debris within the right-of-way, missing address characters, and outdoor storage. Your Honor, this property was cited on June 26, 2019. The notice was mailed first class and certified mail, and the property was posted on July 3rd, 2019. Special Magistrate, to date, all code sections remain in violation. There has been contact at the residence, and for this, the city recommends 30 days to comply or be subject to a $100 a day fine thereafter. All right, so I can see there's excessive trash and debris outside. What's the landscaping issue? Missing grass uh, within the, uh, uh, the two parts. One is a missing grass within the front yard, sides and rear. Um, looks like they were doing some work. Um, the other is the overgrowth in that photograph right there. You'll see this is the right of way, uh, the lack of the landscape maintenance there. So having a okay. close hanging ordinance. Uh, that must be that right there, right? Correct. Overgrowth, is that the, the overgrowth in the, the next to the fence that we just saw? Yeah. Uh, yes. There and also on the property along the, the, the front part of the property, the fence line and areas such as around the uh, uh, AC unit with, within that photograph. Have you any contact with the people living here? Yes. Every single time that I've been to the property. So there, there has been some progress. Obviously, they have a lot more to do. Um, they stated that uh, they are working on it. They continue to work, in a, work on it. I provided my recommendation of the, the 30 days to comply or the $100 a day fine thereafter. Um, they said that they're in agreement with that, but they're going to continue to correct everything and that they should have it done. Do you think it's reasonable to bring this into compliance within 30 days? Yes. Yes, for these violations, yes. All right, in case CE 1906-0534, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient. I find the property in violation of all of the listed code sections. I give the respondent 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Number 21, CE 1907-0389, 7425 South Flagler Drive has complied. Number 27, CE 1907-0011-604 Fairfax Road. Richard Pazimino, Code Enforcement Officer for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on July 1st, 2019. Certified mail was sent July 3rd, 2019, and the property was posted July 3rd, 2019. This property was cited for 18103E, external doors and windows, 18106A, clean and sanitary conditions, 18103B, repair roof walls and foundation, 18106B, excessive growth, 18106K, landscape maintenance, 34102A, junk abandoned vehicle, 
94-6 restrictions upon land use and 9471C outdoor storage residential. I have had contact with the owner of the property who began work on the property. Um, as of today, the violations that have come into compliance are 18103E, 18103B, 34102A, and 94-6. Um, the, the city's recommendation is 30 days for the property to come into full compliance or $100 a day fine, um, and the owner agrees with that recommendation. So there is uh, still trash and debris on this property? Yes, um, trash and debris, some excessive growth in the front yard and at the rear. Uh, landscape maintenance has to be done as well and some outdoor storage remaining. The owner got injured while he was working, so that's why I agreed to the 30 days. All right, KCE 19070011, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 18106A, 18106B, 18106K, and 9471C. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance for a fine of $100 per day. May issue. <laughs> Number 28, CE19070. One sec, are you guys ready to come back? Yes, sir. All right, why don't we do this one? Since they've been waiting so long, anyway. Hmm. Yeah, um. All right. All right, go ahead. Resuming case ending in 100, 4081 San Marino Boulevard, number 108, date ordered 9 19 18, fine start at 10 22 of 18, number of days 116, uh, total 23,200, daily fine $200 a day, date of compliance 215 of 19. Uh, previously discussed, this is all over no rental license. City's asking for 25% after discussing with them. That there was a, about a 30 day time frame the inspecting officer was, was not here. Um, so we're willing to concede that perhaps 30 days of it shouldn't be there, which would reduce it to 17,200, and the city's asking for 25% of that. Go ahead, sir. Uh, the, uh, our request for reduction essentially is based on the fact that we did pay the application within 10 days of the notice being posted. Uh, the delay in essentially getting the, the permit issued was arranging the inspection. Uh, we made many efforts uh, to arrange the inspection, and I believe there was, if nothing, uh, for lack of a more articulate term, miscommunication. Uh, the same code enforcement officer inspected another unit owned by the same owner, managed by the same management company in the same building. It was uh, understood or expected that the um, inspection of the subject unit here would be done at the same time. I guess that was not the case. Uh, the management company didn't hear any response or any violation, assumed the inspection was taken care of. Um, obviously it wasn't, and on December 5th, when the uh, lien was implemented, uh, that's uh, the time when obviously action was, was further taken to, to remedy this, and that's when the, um, code the assigned code enforcement inspector was on vacation. So really, uh, the matter would have been taken care of in the fall if there wasn't some sort of miscommunication with... Um, Assuming that the property was inspected, everything was fine. It was just calls following up saying, hey, where's our license? Where's our license? You inspected it. Uh, until December 5th, when they never got notice that there was no inspection. There was no issue. Uh, when the inspector did come back, he came out, inspected the property, uh, issued a uh, defect of a missing screen, and that screen was um, uh, fixed within less than a month. But honestly, I... Even 25%, even which is now $6,000 over a screen and a rental license and the application, which was paid months before the uh, lien, I think is just beyond the policy, the, the public policy, the intent of this uh, requirement. We would simply ask for a nominal fine, something in the $1,000 range. Make me an offer. I think, four, uh, I think four digits, one that begins with a one and ends in zero, zero, zero is, is very fair and reasonable. The city wants six. Is that right? Uh, actually, 25% would have been of the new amount would be 4,300. So the city wants 4,300, and the respondent wants 1,000. I thought he asked for 1,999. <laughs> that doesn't sound as good, though. I don't like the rate. He said it four digits starting with a one, sir. I just think again. I just think it's far beyond the scope of the intent of this. 
the application was paid, it was just the back and forth and, and a miscommunication with arranging the inspection. I'll reduce it to $2,500 payable within 30 days. Thank you. And that notice comes by mail? Yeah. All right, thanks. All right. Number 28, CE 1907 Marlboro Road. Richard Pasmino, Code Enforcement Officer, City West Palm Beach. This property was cited July 2nd, 2019. Certified mail was sent and the property was posted on July 3rd, 2019. This property was cited for clean and sanitary conditions, excessive growth, failure to comply, and trees, hedges obstructing the right of way. I've had no contact with the owner of the property. Um, as of today, the property is in full violation still. Um, the city's recommendation is for 15 days for the property to come into compliance or in order to abate the violations. Tell me about the conditions on the property that would support an abatement. The front yard is still overgrown, as seen in the uh, photos, as well as that to the left of the wall is also still in violation. In your experience, would you think the condition there constitutes a, a habitat for vermin? Yes. And a possible fire hazard? Yes. Is there anyone living in this property? I do see a car every now and then. I've had no contact though. But they haven't, uh, you haven't been able to talk with them? No. The clean and sanitary, where's the trash and debris? Um, there's debris on the sidewalk, vegetative debris, and as well as in the yard and driveway. So it just doesn't look like anyone's maintaining the no. landscaping here at all? All right, in case CE 1907006, want to make the following findings of fact and life find notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of 18106A, 18106B, 18215B, and 744C4. I give the respondent 15 days to bring the property into compliance. Hereby, <coughs> excuse me, I hereby note, uh, make the finding that the conditions on this property constitute a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. If the property is not complied within 15 days, I authorize the city to enter the property and abate any and all violations. I hereby assess the cost of said abatement against the property and property owner. Number 29, CE 1907 Upland Road. Richard Pasmino, Code Enforcement Officer, City West Palm Beach. This property was cited July 9th, 2019. Certified mail was sent July 10th, 2019. And certified mail was received July 11th, 2019. This property was cited for landscape areas must be grass, unpaved parking, uh, prohibited vehicles on the property, and restrictions upon land use. I've had no contact with the owner of the property. Um, as of this morning, the property is still in violation of the landscape areas must be grass, unpaved parking, and prohibited vehicles on the property. Uh, that's commercial vehicles and uh, prohibited truck that you'll see um, in the last photo. Um, the, the code 94-6 restrictions upon land use was for the property running a business. They own the, a plumbing business. I don't have evidence off that. I was going off testimony from the neighbors, so I'd like to remove that code as the other violations do still exist. Okay. So they're still missing grass. Is, is that what you're talking about, the, the spots on the? Yeah, uh, right on the driveway where the vehicles were being parked. The, uh, okay, I saw the, the, the truck was parked on the grass. They're still doing that? Yeah, you'll see one from this morning at the end. <clears throat> They did pull some permits for a new fence, and it looks like they're trying to maybe fence in one of the restricted vehicles, the truck. Still can't park it on the grass, though. No. Nor can you park a commercial vehicle there either way, whether you fence it or not. All right, and I guess that, that, right, uh, uh, that truck with the lettering on the side is the one that's uh, the commercial vehicle? Yeah, a plumbing van yeah. truck, commercial vehicle. All right, and so you're asking for what, 30 days? I'm asking for 10 days for the property to come into compliance with 
94482A and 94487B1 or $100 a day fine. And I'm asking for 30 days for the grass or $100 a day. <clears throat> okay, that seems reasonable to me. Uh, in case CE 19070149, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice this official from the property in violation of 94442C1. I'll give the respondent 30 days to come to compliance with that section or a fine of $100 per day may issue. As to 9442A and 94487B1, I find violations of both or the respondent to correct within 10 days or a fine of $100 per day may issue. Number 30, CE 19070154112, Roosevelt Place. Richard Pasmino, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited July 9th, 2019. Certified mail was sent July 10th, 2019. And the property was posted July 11th, 2019. This property was cited for clean and sanitary conditions, excessive growth, um, exterminate, there was a bee infestation on the property, a failure to comply, and trees, hedges obstructing the right of way. I've had no contact with the owner of the property. Um, as of today, all violations remain except the bee infestation, 18106E. Um, there's no evidence of bees anymore where they were located. Um, all the other violations do remain. Uh, the city's asking for 15 days for the property to come into compliance, or the city's asking for an order to abate the violations. Can you describe the conditions on the property that constitute a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach? Yes, the front yard and the swale area are <laughs> overgrown. Um, vegetation growing into the right of way. Uh, the vegetation's over six inches. And it Potential habitat for vermin and a fire hazard? Correct. All right, in case CE 19070154, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice this official find the property in violation of 18106A, 18106B, 18215B, and 744C4. Respondent has 15 days to bring the property into compliance. I make further finding that the conditions on the property constitute a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. In the absence of compliance, I hereby authorize the city to enter the property and bait any and all violations. Thank you. Number 33, CE 19060296 Street. All right, Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case is in reference to a single family residence that was issued a notice of violation via certified mail and posting on June 18th for a driveway in disrepair, a drainage pump in disrepair causing pooling in front of the uh, residence, exterior lighting in disrepair, trash and de debris on the property, no rental license to rent the property. No number showing the address of the property. Uh, landscaping in need of maintenance and restoration. Uh, swale needed in the, so I'm sorry, sod needed in the swale and for parking on the grass. That's not it, is it? No, there it is, that's it. So there's that's a it. renter no, living at this property? I'm sorry, sir? There's a renter living at this property? Yes, there is. That's it. Okay, the notice of violation was issued uh, via certified mail and posting on uh, June, 19th, June 18th and gave the respondent uh, three days to cease parking on the grass, 10 days to remove the trash and debris and to apply for a rental license, and 30 days to comply with the other previously mentioned violations. While posting the property, I spoke with the tenants. Um, however, there was a bit of a, a language barrier there. I tried to get the owner's information, uh, phone number information, I couldn't get that. I have not heard from the property owner. As I tell you, the property is only coming to compliance with uh, code section 94-482A. Uh, the vehicles are no longer parking on the grass. However, the property remains out of compliance with 18-100. The driveway and egress area remain in disrepair, causing trip hazards. 18-103G, the drain pipe in front of the building remains in disrepair and continues to call, <coughs> cause pooling. 18-103I, the exterior lighting is in need of repair. 18106A, trash and debris remain, remain outside. 18106A, there's no rental license for the property, nor has one been applied for. 78-6, no address characters have been installed. 94-442C-2-A, landscaping is still in need of disrepair and rest, repair and restoration. 94-442-E, the swell is still in need of sod. Uh, the city is asking for 30 days for compliance or a $200 day fine be assessed. And you've had no contact with deals with dignity? 
Uh, no, sir, just the tenants. I just spoke with the tenants. It's a strangely ironic name. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. All right, in case uh, CE1906029, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this efficient, I find the property in violation of all of the listed code sections except for 94482A. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $200 per day, measure. Number 35, CE1907006550130 Street. Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case in reference to a single family residence that was issued a notice of violation via certified mail and posting on July 3rd for trash and debris in the alley way behind the, uh, the property and landscaping in need of restoration and maintenance. The notice of violation gave the respondent three days to remove the trash and debris and 30 days to restore the uh, landscaping. Since the notice of violation was issued, I have not heard from the respondent. I did try to call respondent to discuss the violations with him as I I have his contact information from previous uh, code, code cases I had open with him. In fact, we did discuss uh, the landscaping uh, in months past. I, I did not hear back from him. As of today, the property remains a viol violation of code sections 18-106A, clean and sanitary. Um, some of the trash has been removed. There's just some concrete pieces in the back in the alleyway. Um, no progress or attempts have been made to comply with the uh, landscaping code section 94-446-2. The city is asking the respondent to come into compliance within 30 days or $100 day fine be assessed. So it's still missing sod and overgrowth? Yeah, basically the front of the house, it had, it had um, mulch mainly down there, mulch and rocks. That's all washed away and hasn't been maintained in, uh, since November of last year at least, when I first advised them that, listen, this can't continue. So there's no uh, maintained, there's no uncovered ground, essentially? Correct. And there's some overgrowth towards the back along the alleyway. And you can see there's a dead plant there or somebody ran it over. There's no nothing there. There's just uh, leaves and dirt and exposed. Trash and debris there. Yeah. Okay. In case CE1907-0065, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice this sufficient. I find the property in violation of 18106A and 94446-2. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property. You did ask for 30 days, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I did. What fine were you seeking? $100 a day. 30 days or a fine of $100 per day, may issue. Number 36, CE1907-0071, 3316 Poinsettia Avenue. This case in reference to a single family residence that was issued a notice of violation via certified mail and posting on July 5th for weeds and overgrowth in violation of code section 94-446-2. The notice of violation gave 30 days to comply by removing the weeds and overgrowth and restoring the landscaping per city ordinance specifications, basically sod and other living plant life. Uh, since the notice of violation was issued, I, I have not heard from uh, the respondent an inspection yesterday revealed that it appears the weeds and overgrowth were cut at least one time since then, but they, due to the rain and such, uh, they've, they've reappeared. Uh, and no, no sod has been put down, uh, just any, it's all still weeds and dirt. Um, the city is asking for compliance within 30 days or $100 a day fine be assessed. All right, CE1907-0071, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of 94-4462. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance for fine of $100 per day, measure. Number 37, CE1906-033873952nd Street. Robert Watkins, CE1906-033873952nd Street. Robert Watkins, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance. 73957 Street was, property was cited on June the 19th. Certified mail sent June the 24th. Certified mail was received. Property in City Hall posted on the 24th of July. Property was cited for 18-102-3, 18-106A, 18-106G, 94-442C-1, 18-106B. Compliant violations are 18-102-3, 18-106-A, 18106B, 94-442C-1, 18-106-B, 94-442C-1. So we just got the paint? Say again? It's just the paint, is that the issue? No, I, I mistakenly wrote the wrong one. Actually, the remaining violation is 94-442-C-1, and that would be the saw. Okay. 
And this violation is essentially the absence of sod or, or weeds? Yes, yes, just the sod of the yard. They were supposed to complete it today. Um, city's requesting uh, 20 days or $100 a day after just to do the sod that's left. So you've spoke with them and they're attempting to put the sod in? Yes, I spoke with them yesterday as they were getting delivery. CE 1906338, find the property in violation of 94442C1. They have 20 days to come to compliance or fine of $100 per day. Number 38, CE 1906040417 50th Street. City of West Palm Beach Code compliance, Robert Watkins. Property was cited on July 24th. Certified mail was sent July 3rd. Certified mail was received. City Hall was posted on the 24th of July. Property was cited for 18-100 and 94-442-C-1. Complied violations are none. Nothing has been complied. I spoke with the home while well, the renters that were there, they said it would complete it. They would just need more time to do saw it. City's requesting 30 days or $100 per day after. What's the egress issue? The, the uh, boarding slash paneling that are on several of the windows. It was on the front and there's some more on the side. They had the aluminum panels that were down and locked into place. So the, the window, they can't get it, the windows are locked down essentially is what the concern is? Yes, sir. So all they really have to do is open the windows? And put an outside. They haven't opened the windows yet? Nope. As of yesterday, nothing was done. And you want to give them 30 days? Yes, I was speaking with them yesterday afternoon. They were referencing the price of sod and stuff, and that they will be able to in another 30 days. All right, CE 1906040, make the following findings of fact on life. I notice is sufficient for the property in violation of 1800-94442C1. Respondents, 30 days to come appliance or a fine of $100 per day, Mr. Sure. Number 39, CE 1906-0409-706-50th Street. City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance, Robert Watkins. You know, Certified mail was sent <clears throat> June the 26th. Posted City Hall July 24th. The, posted the property on July 24th. <clears throat> sorry, June 24th. This property was cited for 22-32-A, 18-162-A, 34-102-A, 74-102-A, 33-A, 81-A, 86-226. a Complied violations are 186162 a 22-32a 34-102a 74-34-a-1-j -34 -A remaining violations is just do it Landscaping and parking. Yeah, the landscaping is cut off on my page, but it's the landscaping. So I can see from the pictures it's that the, there's you know, uh, large giant holes 42. in the grass there. Yep. What's the, okay, and I see that that car is regularly parking in the swale. Is that yeah, that car was moved. It was parked there for sale, and it's been moved, and the red car has been moved. That had no license plate on it. How long did you want to give them? She needs a total of 10 days or $100 a day per after. Can they put grass down in 10 days? But they were getting delivery also yesterday. Oh, so okay. it should be compliant when I go back out. Let's give them 15 just in case. Right. All right, CE 19060409, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, I find the property in violation of 86226 and 94442C1. Respondent has 15 days to come to compliance or find a $100 per day measure. Number 40, CE 19060479, 62157 Street. This is Robert Watkins, City of West Reach Code Compliance. Property was cited on June 26. Certified mail was sent and received on June, well, June 26. 
City Hall was posted July 24th. The property was cited for 18-100, 18-102-3, 18-103-B, 18-103-C, 18-103-E, 18-103-G, and 18-106-E. Compliant violations, there are none that are complied as of yet. Seems so requesting 30 days or $100 a day per after. I have no contact with the property manager or anyone in charge of that. So let's run through these. Um, the uh, egress issue, is that? Uh, yeah, there's, well, when those pictures roll around, there's boards and uh, panels on the windows on the side as well. There are no screens on the windows? Yeah, several of the ones on the front and on the side do not have screens on them. I can see the issues with the foundation and wall. Is there, there's a, just, is the, the roof is in disservice as well? Yes, sir. I can see the issues with the interior walls. Yeah, there's no screens on that window. And there's Exterior doors. Is that, are those bees? Yep. Plumbing, what's the plumbing fixtures? Say again? Plumbing fixtures. And the rest, and one of the restrooms, there's a photo when you turn on the water, there are water squirts everywhere around the, the handles. Oh yeah, that was the one I just passed, but. And I guess the exterminate is the bees? Mm-hmm. You wanna give them 30 days? Yes, sir. All right, in CE 19060479, I make the following findings of fact on life. I notice sufficient to find the property in violation of each of the listed code sections. I hereby assess if order the respondent come in compliance within 30 days or fine of $100 per day may issue. Number 41, CE 19060489, 504-52nd Street. Robert Watkins, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance. This property was cited on June 26. Certified mail was sent out June 26. Certified mail was received. City Hall was posted July 24th. Property was cited for 18-100, 18-103-E, 94-302-A-4. No compliant violations as of yet. City is requesting 30 days or $100 per day after. So the exit points are obstructed. What's the problem with the external doors? It's missing uh, panels on the windows as well. And there's another door on the, well, it's hard to see that it's dark back there, but the door itself is missing. And then that door, when I went up to post, it has screws in the bottom. So I uh, doubt there's, anyone's living there. There's an issue with the fence? Yes, it's right there. And okay, the first pictures that were coming up. You want to give them 30 days or $100 per day? Yep, yes, sir. All right, in case CE 19060489, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of 18100, 18103E, 94302A4. Spawn has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day may issue. Number 42, CE 19070301, 51st Street. This property was cited on July 18th. Certified mail was sent July 17th. Certified mail was returned. Posted City Hall July 24th. This property was cited for 18-106-B, 18-106-M, 34-102A, 94-302A-4, and 94-71-C. Compliant violations were 34-102A, 18-106-M, 18-106-B, 94-302-A-4. Remaining violation was 94-71C. So there's a question, 30 days or 100 hours per day after. So they did all the hard stuff and outdoor storage is what's holding this up? Yep, yes sir. As of yesterday when I went there, there was still outdoor shelving in the front. That's it, the junk that's sitting over there by that bag? Oh no, it's right by the front door. That was still remaining on the left of the picture. Yep. All right, CE 19070301, I make the following findings of fact on law. If I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of 9471C, respond has 30 days to come into compliance or fine of $100 per day may issue. Number 53, CE 19050151318, Superior Place. Okay. 
Welcome back, Officer McFarlane. It's been so long. Long ago. <clears throat> Good afternoon, City of West Palm Beach Court Compliance Officer Paul McFarlane. On May 6th, the property at 318 Superior Place was cited for safe egress, remove shutters from window, uh, repair of roof, clean and sanitary conditions, trash and debris about the property, power wash driveway and sidewalk, excessive growth, inoperative vehicle, Remove non-working and untagged vehicles from property. Uh, swells and parkways overgrown. Uh, unpaved parking. Prohibited vehicle and outdoor storage. Property was posted May 21st. Certified mail went out May 8th. Certified mail was signed for May 9th. Um, I have come into contact with the property owner. And um, all violations still remain. The only violation that has come into compliance is the prohibited vehicle. Um, I am in agree. The property owner is in agreement to um, come into compliance within 60 days or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. So the egress issue is shutters on the windows. Shutter on the window. The car parked on the grass there. That's inoperative. Um, he has some outdoor storage on the porch there. The um, grass is still overgrown. He has since removed that wrecked vehicle, but the one on the grass is still there. Okay. The uh, roof walls foundation? Yeah, okay. as you can see the uh, fascia there. Um, there's also some patchwork on top there. Uh, that's the rear of the property that's overgrown. All right. KCE 19050151. I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient. Find the property in violation of all the listed code sections except for 9447B1. Responded at 60 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day, may issue. Number 54, CE 19050570201 Lane Hart Court. Good afternoon, Paul McFarland, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer. On May 30th, the property at 201 Lane Hart Court was cited for unsanitary conditions, excessive growth, uh, rental tax violation, certificate of use, and overgrown swale. Uh, property was posted July 9th. Certified mail went out May 31st. Certified mail was signed for June 6th. Um, as of yesterday, the property has come into compliance with the unsanitary conditions, overgrown grass, overgrown swales and parkways. The only violation that remains is the rental license violation and the certificate of use. I have been in contact with the property owner. They have since entered an application for the rental license. Um, but they still need to um, register the LLC with the, with the um, Division of Licensing and also have the rental inspection conducted. Um, with, with that being said, city is recommending 30 days to come to compliance or $200 a day until compliance is achieved. There is a tenant on this property? Yes, sir. All right, in case uh, CE 19050570, make the following findings of fact and life find notice is sufficient for the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A. Respond has 30 days to come to compliance or fine of $200 per day, Mr. issue. Number 58, CE 19060173-1912 Ware Circle. Good afternoon, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On June 10th, the property at 1912 Ware Circle 
was cited for external doors and windows, remove wood from windows and doors and replace windows. Um, boarding certificate expired, address characters and outdoor storage. <coughs> Excuse me. Property was posted June 11th, 2019. Certified mail went out June 11th, 2019. Certified mail was returned June 15th. I've had no contact with the property owner. As of yesterday, there are no permits in our system for the replacement of the doors and windows. Uh, with that being said, City is recommending 45 days to come into compliance or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. So the doors and windows are covered by wood? Yes, sir. The boarding certificate has expired. There's yes, no sir. numbers on the building. Yep, no address characters. Uh, there's buckets and debris about the property. And, um, basically, it, it, there was a fire here, obviously. Um, they have since pulled permits to repair the roof. So um, I have no idea if they're going to, to, to address the windows and doors. They have only addressed the roof. And how do, the windows and doors are not watertight. I mean, can you see gaps in them? Is that why you cited that? Uh, basically because, because of the fire. Um, Fire department had to go in and break out all the doors and the windows, so that's why they were covered. So I'm well aware that there's nothing behind those boards. Okay. All right, in case CE 19060173, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice this sufficient find the property in violation of code sections 18103E, 18265D, 78-694, 71-C. It's bonus 45 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day, my issue. Number 60, CE 19060271-1933, Heltona Circle. Good afternoon. City of West Palm Beach Code Officer Paul McFarlane. On June 13th, the property at 1933 Hiltona Circle was cited for an operative vehicle and address characters. Um, notice was hand-delivered July 9th. Certified mail was sent June 25th. Certified mail was received June 27th. Um, I did uh, make contact with the property owner yesterday. Um, the property has since come into compliance with the address characters, but the inoperative vehicle still remains. Um, property owner did request 30 days to have that vehicle removed. Um, with that being said, city is recommending 30 days to come to compliance or $50 a day until compliance is achieved. Why is that vehicle inoperable? Uh, there's two flat tires on the other side there, and the tag is no good. All right, KCE 19060271, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient on the property in violation of 34102B. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day mission. Number 61, CE 19060273218 Baker Drive. Good afternoon, City of West Palm Beach Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On June 14th, the property at 218 Baker Drive was cited for clean and sanitary, excessive growth, rental license violation, and certificate of use, and swells and parkway overgrown. Property was posted July 9th, 2019. Certified mail was sent June 17th, 2019. Certified mail was returned June 20th, 2019. I, I have had contact with the, <clears throat> excuse me, with the property manager. Um, the property has since come into compliance with the unsanitary conditions, excessive growth, and swell overgrown. They're st still out of compliance with the rental license and certificate of use. Um, they have since made application, but the property has not been scheduled for inspection for that rental license. Um, with that being said, 
the city is recommending 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day until compliance is achieved. So just the rental license and certificate of use are outstanding? Yes. KCE19, actually, I suppose I, let me ask this before I give the order, and, and you're uh, testifying that there is a, uh, um, a tenant on this property? Correct, per, prop, um, per them contacting me, because I did talk with the, um, with the tenants and the property manager did reassure that it was, they did have tenants, because the reason that the inspection is being held up is because they're going through the eviction process. So they want to complete that, and then they will schedule. Okay, KCE one nine zero six zero two seven three. Make the following findings of fact and life. Find notice is sufficient. Find the property in violation of eighteen one sixty two a and twenty two thirty two a. Respond has thirty days to bring the property in compliance, or a fine of two hundred dollars per day. Issue. Number sixty two CE one nine zero six zero four five zero four thirteen Superior Place. Good afternoon, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On June twenty fourth. The property at 413 Superior Place was cited for certificate of use, reasonable accommodations, and business tax violation. Property was posted July 9th, 2019. Certified mail was sent June 25th. Certified mail was returned June 27th. Um, the, the property has since come into compliance with the reasonable accommodations. Um, they did make application for that and was approved, but they have not made application for the business that's being ran from the property. Um, I did, I did it, um, explain to them everything that's required, and they have only accomplished one of the things that needs to be accomplished. Um, with, with that being said, City is recommending 30 days to come to compliance or a one time fine of $250 be assessed. So they submitted the application for reasonable accommodation and they didn't pay their business tax? No, which makes no sense. Because they I've need ever both. seen the reverse. Why didn't they submit them at the same time? I have no idea. But. I explained everything to them, step by step by step, what they had to do. Perhaps you should explain it to them again. <laughs> KCE 19060450, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient for the property in violation of 2232A and 82144. Respond has 30 days to come into compliance or a one time fine of $250. Number 63, CE 19060533, 1547-42nd Street. Good afternoon, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On June 26th, the property at 1547-42nd was cited for an operative vehicle and trash can placement. Certified mail was sent June 27th. Certified mail was returned June 29th. Um, I did make contact with the property owner yesterday. Um, we did go over the violations. As of yesterday, the inoperative vehicle still remains in the trash can is still in the view of public. Um, the property owner did request 30 days to remove the inoperative vehicle. So with that being said, city is recommending 30 days to come to compliance or $50 a day until compliance is achieved. All right, KCE one nine zero six zero five three three. I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient on the property in violation of thirty four one zero two B and seventy four thirty four A one J. Respondents thirty days to come to compliance or fine of fifty dollars per day. Issue. Thank you. Number sixty four CE one nine zero seven zero zero three three six seventeen thirty six streets complied. Number sixty five CE one nine zero seven zero one five one six twenty three thirty eighth streets complied. Number 66, CE 19070166-4401 North Flagler Drive. Good afternoon. Chris Thompson, City of West Palm Beach, Code Compliance. The property at 4401 North Flagler was um, cited on the 11th of J July. Um, they were cited for rotting wood, an operable vehicle, and trash can placement. 
the certified mail was sent out on the 13th of July. City Hall was posted on the 11th. I have not, actually, I have gotten in contact with the homeowner and advisor. Was the property as well as City Hall? I'm sorry? You said City Hall was posted. Was the property posted too? Yeah, the property was posted on the 11th. City Hall was posted on the 11th as well. Okay. And certified mail was sent on the 13th. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as of yesterday, the, the property was not in compliance, so um, the city is requesting an additional, additional 30 days to become in compliance and or 200 hours until compliance is achieved. You didn't mention 18106G. Is that still an issue, the paint? <coughs> yes, paint as well. Rotting wood, paint, inoperable vehicle, and trash can. I'm sorry. All right. That's the rotting wood there? Yes. And I can see where paint is needed. What's the junk or abandoned vehicle? The vehicle is in the driveway. There's no tag on it, and the tires were flat. And the garbage cans are just sitting out there in plain view? Yes, correct. All right, in case CE 19070166, make the following findings of fact and life I notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of code sections 18103B, 18106G, 34102A, and 7434A1J. Respondent has 30 days to come into compliance or a fine of $200 per day. May I issue? Number 67, CE 19070211711 42nd Street. Christopher Thompson, City of West Palm Beach, Code and Compliance. City at, um, I'm sorry, the property at 711 42nd Street um, was cited for outdoor storage, trash can placement, and inoperable vehicle. Property was cited on the 11th. No, City Hall was posted on the 15th of July, and certified mail was sent out on the 16th of July. Um, I have not made contact with the homeowner. Property was posted at the same time as the city? Yes, posted. It was property was cited on the 11th. Um, City Hall was posted on the 15th, and certified mail was sent on the 16th of July. All right. So we got clean and sanitary. We have outdoor storage, trash can placement, and inoperable vehicle. Um, City is requesting an additional 30 days to come into compliance and 200 dollars until compliance is achieved. This is a CE 19070211. 711 42nd Street? Yes. Yeah. Clean and sanitary. 67. I don't see an operable vehicle on my list. <coughs> I got clean and sanitary. I got garage, <coughs> can, and outdoor storage. They had a bunch of vehicles. They had a bunch of vehicles in this driveway. I'm not sure if any of the pictures got deleted. There it is. Ours is cut. We have, and my order only has three violations. Page 28 on top. It's not on here. No. Oh, well, you may have a different, I don't know. Was the, was the, uh, the inoperable vehicle, was it noticed to them? It's not on here. It's not on there. But you're testifying that it was noticed to them in the yeah. in the, the certified mail and posting. Yes, sir. What's the clean and sanitary? Is that the kids stuff lying out front? Yes. It's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. A lot back of junk there. on the ground. Yes. Outdoor storage, I can see, is a bunch of stuff out there, and the garbage cans are right in front of the garage. Mm-hmm. And those two vehicles are not tagged properly. No. And you were seeking uh, 30 days. Yes. And what was the fine you were seeking? 200. I think it was 200. All right, in case, uh, um, case number CE19070211, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient from the property in violation of 18106A, 7434A1J, and 9471C. And what's the code section on the other one? 
34102B. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $200 per day, Mayor. Number 68, CE 19070263 736146th Street is complied. Number 69, CE 19070304 637-46th Street is complied. Number 70, CE 19070305-3715 Pinewood Avenue. Christopher Thomas, the City of West Palm Beach, Code of Constraints. Um, property at 35... 3715 Pinewood Ave was cited on the 17 on 71619. Notice of violation was posted in City Hall in 71719. Certified mail was sent on 72219. Property was cited for outdoor storage and trash can placement. I have made contact with the homeowner and um, as of yesterday, property was still not in, in compliance. So the city is requesting an additional 10 days and $100 per day until compliance is achieved. All right, I see the outside storage. What's the landscape? Oh, the, it looks like weeds and overgrowth. Is that it? And the need for sod there? You said you posted the city, but I assume you also meant that you posted the city on the property? Yes, we posted the property was posted in City Hall on the 17th. All right. 7th, 17th. All right, in case... Uh, I didn't write down your request here. Did you say 30 days? 10 days or $100. Ten days. Ten days is a little short for sod, don't you think? We can give them 30 days if you want to. Well, I just want to make sure the time is reasonable. It's going to take some time for people to get sod and replace that, I would think. I mean, I'd agree with you on outdoor storage. 10 days is plenty for that. But, uh, but we want to give them the opportunity to comply before they end up being fined, right? So let's do this in case CE 19070305. Make the following findings of fact in life. I notice this sufficient from the property in violation of 94442C1 and 9471C. Give the respondent 30 days to come to compliance or fine of $100 per day, Mission. Number 71, CE 19070306, 3711 Pinewood Avenue. City of West Palm Code Enforcement, Chris, Chris Thompson speaking. Property was cited, property at 3711 Pinewood was um, cited on the 16th of July. Notice of violation was posted in City Hall on the 17th. Certified mail was sent out on July 18th. Property was cited for inoperable vehicle and exterior paint. I have made contact with the homeowner and as of yesterday, um, the property was still not in compliance. So the city is requesting additional 30 days to, become in, to come into compliance and $100 until the compliance is achieved. Is that door blue? I'm, I'm sorry? The door was blue? The door was blue. blue. What's going on there? Tape. Where's that tape? Uh, mm -hmm. Matches their numbers. Oh, yeah. It is blue. Looks blue. But yeah, their numbers are blue. Were they starting to paint? Is that what was going on there? Ah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so we have that. So that uh, that vehicle doesn't have a proper tag on it. No, there were no. Clearly, some paint needs to be done in some way here. All right, in case CE one nine zero seven zero three zero six, and make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this fish found a property in violation of thirty four one zero two A and eighteen one zero six G. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of $100 per day may issue. Mm -hmm. Pinewood mm -hmm. Avenue kept you busy, huh? Yes. Number 72, CE 19070307-3705 Pinewood Avenue. Christopher Thompson, City of West Palm Code Compliance. So this property at 3705 Pinewood was cited on 71619. Notice of um, notice was posted at City Hall on 7-17-19. Certified mail was sent on the 17th as well, 7-17-19. Property was cited for inoperable vehicle and exterior paint. I have not made any contact with the homeowner. And at this time, the city is requesting an additional 30 days. The city's asking for an additional 30 days to come into compliance or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. What's the junk or abandoned vehicle? Is it that the, blue car? The Expedition in the back has no tag on it. It's a 
tires are flat. It hasn't, it's just been sitting there. And the paint, I guess, is the, the fading paint there. And also in the front where there are some brown spots. If you continue going up through the pictures, you'll see it. <clears throat> Where's the brown spots? See on the side of the house. Go back if you go back to the last picture. There, brown. Oh, there. Okay, and I there. saw. It's a rust spot. Yes. yes. <clears throat> All right, in case uh, CE1907030307, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of 18106G, 34102A. Respond has 30 days to come to compliance or find it $100 per day, measure. Number 73, CE1907033062748 Street. Christopher Thompson, City of West Palm Court Compliance. Property at 62748 Street was cited on 7 18 19. Um, notice of violation was posted at City Hall in 7-18-19. Um, certified mail was sent on 7-19-19. Property was cited for inoperable vehicle, trash can placement, and boarded windows. I have not made contact with the homeowner, and as of yesterday, property was not in compliance. So he's requesting an additional 30 days to come into compliance, or $100 until compliance is achieved. Where's the, okay. is that the inoperable vehicle? Yes, sir. Flat tires, is the, is the tag expired? Yes. I can see the garage can is out there in plain view. I just need to see the windows. They don't look boarded. It's, a, it's a, if you go back to that picture where the car was, but it's not a good picture. We'll go back to the car. The Let's other save one. us some time. Tell me what's the, the deal other with one. the Just tell me what the deal with the windows is. Well, the windows on the side of the house, right that one right there, on the side, right above the car, that's board right where the window is. Yeah. Yes. It's boarded? Yes. Okay. All right, in case uh, CE1907030330, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient from the property in violation of 18100-34102A and 7434A1J. Respond is 30 days to come to compliance or fine of $100 per day may issue. Number 74, CE 19070338638 Street. Christopher Thompson, City of West Palm Code Compliance. Property at 638 38th Street was cited on the 18th of July. Notice of violation was posted in City Hall on the 18th as well. Certified mail was sent on 719. And the property was cited, was actually cited for outdoor storage, sod, overgrowth, and trash can placement. Um, I have not made contact with the homeowner. As of yesterday, the property was still not in compliance. City is requesting an additional 10 days to come into compliance, or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. <coughs> Excuse me. I see outdoor storage, I see excessive growth. I see sod needed in the swell and landscaping needs to be done. Outdoor storage. And the garbage can is in plain view. You want to give them 30 days? Yes, we can, yes. All right, in case CE 19070338. Make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient from the property in violation of uh, 18106B, 7434A1J, 7894C, 94442C1, and 9471C. Respond as 30 days to come in compliance or fine of $100 per day, measure. Number 75, CE1907037 has complied. Number 76, CE1907039353044 Street complied. Number 78, CE1906020919907 North Tamron Avenue. So did you lose a, a, uh, an office pool to be the last person on the agenda? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> Good morning. Office of Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. The property at 1907 North Tamron Avenue was originally cited on June 11th of 2019 for clean, unsanitary conditions, resurfacing of parking areas, and traffic control aids. 
Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on July 9th of 2019, as well as City Hall. There's been no contact by the owner, and all violations are still current. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within 15 days or $100 per day thereafter. So the problem with the surface is that it needs to be paved. It looks like it's missing lines. Correct. Um, it, they wouldn't have to acquire a permit because it's already an original surface. So all they'd be doing is just repaving over what's there and restriping. What's the traffic control aids? The traffic control aids are the basically the parking stops. The stops? Uh, they need to acquire two new ones. So they don't need a permit for that? They just got to paint and get the... Correct. All right. What's the clean and sanitary issue? <coughs> um, throughout the parking lot, um, beer cans, cigarette butts, trash, debris. Okay. Have you had any contact with them at all? No, sir. Why don't we give them 21 days just okay. to make sure that they have time to buy these things and paint. Case uh, CE 19060209. Give the following findings of fact and law. Find notice is sufficient. Find the property in violation of 18106A, 94485E, and 94485G. Respondent has 21 days to bring the property in compliance. What fine were you looking for? Uh, $100. Or a fine of $100 per day, Mish. Number 79, CE 19060459, 9224th Street, Unit 3. Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, property at 922 14th Street, was originally cited on June 24th of 2019 for failure to secure a permit, repair dwelling to weather tight state, repair of roof and walls, repair of external doors, repair of, of outside stairs, clean unsanitary conditions, excessive overgrowth, landscape maintenance, and maintaining a coal and hot water lines. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on June 25th of 2019, as well as City Hall. I have made contact with the owner who has corrected some of the violations, but not um, enough to actually um, cancel out the violations. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within 35 days or $100 per day thereafter. So what's not in compliance? Basically, everything is not in compliance. She's actually started some of the work, but none of it's um, completed. All right, what does she need a building permit for? Um, the back portion of it, I think there's a picture of it. There's um, some steps that they've actually constructed out of uh, two by fours for the back of the property. They would need a building inspector to go back and take a look at it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. Oh, they built that? Yes, sir. Uh, what's the watertight issue? The watertight issue is on the side of the house. Um, I think there is... Weather tight would basically be around the windows. Uh, the windows needed to be caulked. They actually put new windows in. There's a small gap around each one of the windows where the putty is at the bottom. Okay. That's basically open. So they would need to uh, re-caulk and secure that as well as the doors. Same issue with the, uh, the doors. That there's, that's why there's a uh, yes, foundation exterior wall Correct. violation. External doors and windows. Yes, sir. Not installed correctly, is that it? That is correct. Exterior repair, looks like you have a damaged uh, stucco, it looks like, right? That is correct. Um, also on the eaves of the building, too, as well. Interior repair, what is that? Um, interior repair is basically there inside the window. That needs to be caulked as well. Okay. When they put in the new windows, they cut the stucco around where the old windows were, but didn't actually secure and seal the window frames. Non-residential door and windows? It's basically the same thing. What's the stair? Is that the, uh, the stairs that they built again? That's or? correct. And I can see the junk for clean and sanitary. Mm -hmm. Excessive growth. 
is okay. weeds there in the front of the property on the sides back there in the back. All right, Lane Cane Main is okay. What's the hot and cold water lines? Hot and cold water lines on the inside. Um, they actually installed a hot water heater, which is also under the securing a permit. Um, but when they install it, they install the lines to where only cold water comes out on both the hot water and the cold side. So they have no hot water. All right, you requested 35 days. That's a weird number. Why don't we make it 45? Case says CE 19060459. Make the following findings of fact and law. Properties in violation of 105.1, 18103A, 18103B, 18103E, 18105B, 18105C, 18105E, 18105F, 18106A, 18106B, 18106K, and 18975. Respond us 45 days to bring the property in compliance to find a $100 per day issue. Number 80, CE 19060460, 922.14th Street. Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach. The property at 922.14th Street was originally cited on June 24th of 2019 for no rental license and certificate of use. Service was achieved by certified mail. Property was posted on June 25th of 2019, as well as City Hall. Uh, there's been no contact with the owner. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within 30 days or $100 per day thereafter. How do we know that this property needs a rental license? I spoke with uh, the young lady that lives in that unit, and then there's also another unit, which is another case that's coming up. So and you, spoke they, with, you spoke with the tenant? Yes, sir. Typically, these cases are 30 days and $200 a day. Is there a reason why you wanted to go a little lower in this one? Um, no, sir. None in particular. In case CE 19060460, I make the following findings of fact in life. I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A. Respond as 30 days to come into compliance or fine of $200 per day may issue. Number 83, CE 19060618, 1104-18th Street. Actually, that one's been complied. Hmm. Always like to hear that. 83 is <laughs> complied? Yes, 83 is complied. 84, CE 19060619, 1040-18th Street. Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Property at 1040 18th Street was originally cited on June 28th of 2019 for clean and sanitary conditions, excessive growth, securing vacant property, failure to comply, and the boarding certificate. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on July 8th of 2019, as well as posted in City Hall. There has been no contact with the owner. All violations are still current. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within five days or abatement. Is anyone living here? No, sir. You didn't mention 18214A. Are you not looking at paint boards anymore? Uh, yes, sir, I am. I forgot to put that in there, but that is included in, in the order. What about 94302A, do not use? I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, me neither. So let's eliminate that one. <laughs> All right, so uh, trash and debris on the property. I can see that. Excessive growth, I can see that. The, uh, there's broken uh, glass on the windows. Is that why it's not secure? That's correct. Um, the, property's actually, um, the property actually has vagrants that are in, in the building as well as um, drug activity as well. So that's why we're seeking the abatement to board it up. So the conditions on the property you believe are a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach? Yes, sir, I do. Including vagrants, drug activity, and criminal activity on the property? Yes, sir. All right, and you're seeking uh, five days of abatement? Yes, sir. All right, in KCE 19060619, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient on the property in violation of 18106A, 18106B, uh, 18214A, 18214B, and uh, 
18215B and 18265. Respondent has five days to bring the property into compliance. I make the finding that the property constitutes a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the City of West Palm Beach. In the absence of compliance, after five days, I authorize the City to enter the property and abate any and all violations. I hereby assess the cost of set abatement against property and property owner. Number 85, CE 1906 Street. Officer Phil Cartwright, <clears throat> excuse me, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. The property at 1033 18th Street was originally cited on June 29th of 2018 for clean, unsanitary conditions, excessive growth, junk and abandoned vehicles, and unpaved parking. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on July 3rd of 2019, as well as City Hall. There's been no contact with the owner. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within 15 days or $100 per day thereafter. All right, I see the junk and abandoned vehicle. What's the clean and sanitary issue? Um, just basically trash or whatnot in the front yards around the, the structure of the, of the building. All right, I don't and see the it sides. there, but you're testifying there is trash and debris scattered around the property? Yes, sir. Okay. The excessive growth? Excessive growth, um, basically, uh, there was another picture on the back side that had some overgrowth on the sides. The grass basically needs to be cut, what's left of it. So is your testimony that along the side and rear of the house, the grass has become overgrown? Yes, sir, that is correct. Uh, so the parking issue, is there a car parked on a... On a basically, where those cars are right now, there's no pavement. That's all oh, just okay. sand and dirt. It was grass at one point, I bet, right? At one point, yes, sir, that's correct. And how much time did you want to give them to correct? Uh, 15 days. And what was the fine you were looking for? $100 a day. So it's just cleaning up the trash, cutting the grass, and moving the vehicle. That is correct. All right, KCE 19060620, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient from the property in violation of 18106A, 18106B, 34102A, 9442A, respondents 15 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day, Mr. Number 86, CE 19070003, three scheduled. Number 87, CE 19070091036 State Street. Um, that also has been complied. Perfect. That's 87? Yes. Number 88, CE 19070013, 1911 North Tamron, complied. Number 89, CE 19070022817, Grant Street. Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. The property at 817 Grant Street was originally cited on July 1st of 2019. For failure to secure a permit, safe egress, repair of roof and walls, repair of external doors and windows, repair of plumbing fixtures, clean unsanitary conditions, extermination for pests, repair of electrical outlets, and resurfacing driveway. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on July 2nd of 2019, as well as City Hall. Uh, there has been some contact with the owner who um, has made some small um, repairs with some of the property, but not enough to actually to comply. The city is asking if the property come into compliance within 35 days or $100 per day thereafter. There's a whole lot going on here, huh? Yes, sir. So what's the egress issue? Is it a... Um, I, I believe it's in the front of the property. Keep going with the pictures. Right there. Basically what they did, this is also part of securing the permit. Um, anytime that you add steps or a railing to the actual area of where steps are, you'd have to, to secure a, a building permit the building department then comes out and actually takes a look at the area, making the correct measurements to make sure that the egress is safe as well as the structure that they put up. All right, so that banister both violates the building permit and the egress issue? That is correct. Uh, repair walls and foundations? 
Yeah, I can see. Them. Yep, that's basically yeah. on the inside. Some of the drywall issues that they have. That's the pest extermination issue. Right, interior walls and floors. What's the external doors? The external door is on the front door of the first unit, that unit right there. Um, she can't open her front door. Um, I guess the bottom of the door is a little uneven, so they would have to do some repairs to the bottom half of the door to be able to open it. All right. Plumbing fixtures are not in working condition. Clean and sanitary. Is there debris on the property? Uh, on the outside, okay. the backyard. A lot of the rotten mangoes and everything that needs to be cleaned up. Okay, I can see that. To exterminate, we saw. What's the electrical issue? Um, on the electrical issue, if you go back to the, the video that we showed before, Monique. That is consistent all day long, even with the switch off. Like right now, the, the switch is off, and that's what it's doing all day long. Okay, and the surface and parking loading, the surface uh, the back half of it uh, needs to be resurfaced and restriped. You think they can do all this in 35 days? She started some of it already. Uh, that's some of the work that, that I was talking about earlier before. Um, we can do 40 days. That's fine. I don't have an issue with that. Let's do 45. Okay. Okay, CE 19070022 and make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient from the property in violation of... 105.1, 18100B, 18103C, 18103E, 18103G, 18106A, 18106E, 18095A, and 94485E. Respond us 45 days to bring the property in compliance and fine of $100 per day issue. Number 90, CE 19070349224 14th Street, Unit 1. Office of Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. The property at 92214 Street, Unit 1, it was originally cited on July 2nd of 2019 for repair of external doors, um, windows, ex win repair of windows, exterior paint, repair of plumbing fixtures, excessive odor growth, clean unsanitary conditions, extermination of pests, uh, junk vehicle, and outdoor storage. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on July 3rd of 2019 as well as City Hall. All violations are still current. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within 45 days or $100 per day thereafter. All right, last but not least, let's run through this. Let's see, we got external walls and windows. This unit is um, in front of the other unit that we had from the other case. So this is the first unit and the other one's in the back. So they're basically all under the, the same parcel. Oh. Exterior paint, we can see plumbing fixtures I just saw, clean and sanitary I saw, excessive weeds and growth I see. Did you see pests in this part of the building as well? Yes, I did. Uh, junk and abandoned vehicle? Uh, right in the front yard. That was a picture of the car before. Is it not properly licensed? Um, not properly, li properly licensed, and um, it's got two flat tires on the driver's side. Outdoor storage? Uh, that should be, I had a picture of chairs or whatnot that were sitting out in the front yard. They may have got them mixed in probably with the other case. Yeah, that's definitely an inoperable vehicle. Yeah. That... Uh, Cast iron pipe is probably what's going to take the longest as far as getting the plumbing fixtures taken care of because um, it is an older pipe, so I'm not sure how far back it goes into the house and what type of uh, plumbing permits they're going to need to actually get that work done. I don't see the outside storage, so just tell me what it is. There's uh, it's basically there was a couch that was sitting out there in a chair. In the middle of the lawn? Yes. Right. Yes, sir. Not appropriate outdoor furniture. No, sir. Okay. No lazy boys outside. Generally not. And uh, you're requesting 45 days or $100? Yes, sir. All right. In case uh, CE 19070034, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient from the property in violation of 18103E. 
18103J, 18103G, 18106A, 18106B, 18106E, 34102A, and 9471C. Respondent has 45 days to bring the property in compliance or fine of $100 per day may issue. Thank you. Number 91, CE 19070088, Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, Unit 8, has complied. Number 92, CE 19070227, Windsor Avenue, has complied. Thank you. Seeing no further business before us, <laughs> somehow this meeting is hereby adjourned. Woo, thank you, guys.